Hey, Undisputed listeners, before we start the show, I wanted to tell you about our brand new Fox Sports app and website, foxsports.com. Reimagine for the modern sports fan. Go ahead, download the new app right now. You don't even have to pause this episode. Every day on the new app and website, you'll see the top stories in sports, plus a rich world of written content, videos, social media, and analytics to give you a 360-degree view of the most important stories of the day. Streaming live TV has never been so easy or elegant. Every Fox Sports game, including all pregame and postgame shows, are just one click away. For the extra invested fan, we also go deep with real-time wagering lines, trending prop bets, win probability, and key player projections. Download the new Fox Sports app or visit www.foxsports.com now. Let's start the show. Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. They've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from L.A. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Good morning. How we doing over there? Everybody get your roll on. Get your roll on. Everybody. Yeah. Old Nick Saban. Oh, he, he, he lucked into a do one do as I did. He lucked right into it. I don't know what just meant to be. Good luck. Oh. Look, we fixed 150 yards oh, and 52 well. points. Uh, <laughs> yes. I wish he could have got a hold of Oklahoma. I wish Oklahoma could have gotten a hold of him. Give y'all they want they the got problems. a real offense. Give, you don't want no problems. Give okay. the kind of problem you don't Shannon, want. Shannon, I'm going to let you enjoy this <laughs> while you can because, yes, Alabama looked special last <laughs> night. Alabama rolled to another national championship with a 52 to 24 victory over Ohio State last night. Heisman Trophy was Winner, Devontae Smith took home the offensive MVP after finishing with 12 catches for 215 yards and three touchdowns. And that was all in the first half, guys. Najee Harris finished with three total touchdowns himself and tied quarterback Mac Jones, who threw five touchdowns on the night, put it bluntly after the game, saying, I think we're the best team to ever play. So, Shannon, how surprised were you by this outcome? I'm not surprised by the outcome, Skip, because I thought Alabama would win. I'm surprised by how easy they made it look and the margin of the outcome. Mm. Twin, Skip, it's not like they beat Arkansas or Missouri, who doesn't have the level of five-star recruits mm-hmm. that Alabama has. Yep. Ohio State can go sto- toe-to-toe every single year as far as four- and five-star recruits. This is why every single year they're really the only Big Ten representative. You know, when you say, okay— you look at Clemson, you look at Alabama, and then who you go to? Automatically you go to Ohio State because those are the three teams that year in and year out get the most top 300 uh, 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 high school players. And so I was like, okay, the game's going to be close. I'm saying, you know, especially watching Ohio State last year, last year, last week, what they did to Clemson. They dismantled Clemson. And although Clemson is not what it was uh, uh, a couple of years ago and last year, but, Skip, they're a good football team. They got a, 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 the number one pick in the draft. They got talented four- and five-star players on the offensive and defensive line. And Ohio State took them apart. So I'm saying to myself, okay, the game's going to be close. I expect Alabama to win. But, Skip, this wasn't close. The only thing that, presented for, that prevented Alabama from probably scoring 70 is that Matt Jones fumbled early, and it gave, it gave uh, Ohio State an opportunity to tie the ball game 14-14 and Devontae going out first play of the third quarter. Other than that, Skip, they were about to hang 70 and probably put over 700 yards on Ohio State. I've never seen anything like it. And, Skip, you know, I'm saying to myself, they got to be due for a bad. Skip, you can't play like this every single game, can you? Mm. Can you get 45, 50 points every game, 500, 600 yards every game? Nobody has an answer for Devontae Smith. Well, they're going to double him. Well, uh, uh, Wade said, I want him. You know, I want. I, that's what I – Skip, you see? Will you ask for problems? When you sin for somebody that didn't sin for you, this is what happens. Mm. Skip, I, this is unbelievable. I mean, the way Mac Jones was throwing the football, Skip, and if you look at him, he's pinpoint accurate. Is he the most athletic guy? Skip, when you look at him, you're like, he ain't about to win. He ain't about to do anything but play football. But, Skip, the throws that he was making, he's throwing the ball and Don, uh, Devontae never breaks stride. He's throwing the ball and Najee never breaks stride. The guys never break stride. It's not a, a 15-yard catch and the guy gets tackled. He's throwing the ball, and the guy can continue to run. Yes, Skip, I am No, am I surprised that they won? No, I'm surprised at how easy they made it look in mm-hmm. taking the Ohio State apart. 28 points? 
And just when I thought last year, Skip, we watched LSU and we came out here and talked about Skip. That might have been the best offensive team we've ever seen. They won up them. Mac, I mean, they, they swept every offensive award except the Mackey Award. If they had a receiver, he got the Blitnikoff. The running back got the Dope Walker. The quarterback got the United. They got the Remington for the center. They got the Outland for the left tackle. Skip, they were, and I was like, they do for a bad, they just, and, and if they have a bad game, Ohio State can get them. Mm. One team came within 14 points all year. That was Florida. And they hung, what, 600 yards plus yards, on, maybe 700 on them. Skip, this was, this was unbelievable. Broke the SEC scoring mark, 48 points a game. Uh, I, what do you say? The only thing I'm disappointed in, and I know he's going to be okay because it's plenty of time. Skip, Devontae Smith might have gone to have 350 yards, maybe close to 20 catches. Skip, I've never seen anything like this. And it does it, he does it so effortless, Skip, when you look at it, you're like, he ain't moving that fast. But all you do is see more and more separation between him and the defender. Sark called an unbelievable game. Steve Sarkeesian. Steve Sarkeesian, the offensive coordinator. Skip, a lot of times what we see when guys go get jobs, now they're focused on their new job. Mm -hmm. They got to get their staff together. They got to get their recruiting. And I don't know if they put the time that they need to to make sure everything goes well before they leave. This might have been the best game I've seen him. And he's called some good ones over the last couple of years, Skip. But this might have been the best game he's ever called. And Mac Jones and everybody was outstanding. And Coach Saban said this is, might, be, he's, might, might be most proud of this team considering you got to test every day. They didn't know if they were going to play and then uh, might miss a game here or there. But to play 13 SEC champ games, mm. no, no, no out of schedule, no FCS, no bull job, Skip. Alabama did it. I am surprised by how how easy they made this look. Mm, because you wouldn't even give me seven and a half <laughs> I points would, I yesterday. Would, I would not. Would you do it now? Uh, yeah. I need a 22 and a half. You right give me now. more than that. Because as you say, if Devontae had been able to finish the game, <laughs> it, it would have gotten really ugly. Because Mac Jones was still in there throwing to the bitter end. So I, I don't know. He might have gone for 100. I don't know. They might have tried to hang 100 on him. And right? Mac Jones might have threw for 600. 600. Yeah. Or definitely been in the fives. Okay. Now, before I launch into all of the above, allow me to say that I did think this would be a fairly close game. At least I thought it would be competitive. Right. Because I thought... Ohio State could shorten the game, as Coach Parcells once said on, once upon a time, mm -hmm. about a Super Bowl game against Jim Kelly and the, what did they call him, the K-Gun. -gun. Yeah, K-Guns. It was another spread offense. Right. Throw it all over the field. Okay, we will shorten the field. And it came down to a field goal right. in that, which was wide, as I recall, right, right. I believe. Correct. Scott Norwood. And Scott Norwood. And so the, the Giants pulled off a quote-unquote upset yes. that time because they controlled the clock and controlled the football and kept the K-gun, Jim Kelly's offense, mostly off the 40 field. 40 minutes to 20 minutes, time of possession. 40 to 20. <laughs> okay, so I thought with my former Oklahoma Sooner, <laughs> Trey Sermon, who, who didn't make it at Oklahoma. He, he got beaten out at Oklahoma and said, well, I'm going to transfer to the Ohio State. And he sort of rose up the depth chart from nowhere, and all of a sudden, at the end of the year, he emerged. Skip, well, let me ask you a question this, Skip. How do you get beaten out at Oklahoma and says, you know what, I'm going to pick up and I'm going to go to Ohio State with all the with – they, they loaded. They, they are loaded, <laughs> and Master Teague looked like he was the guy until all of a sudden Trey Sermon was the guy. Yes. And Trey Sermon, obviously, against Northwestern in the Big Ten Championship game, had 331. Mm -hmm. And then he came right back against Clemson with 193. Right. And he started making Justin Fields' job a whole lot easier because he could do this and yes. pull it back and throw it. That's correct. And I thought, well, maybe they can pound away with Trey Sermon and he can – take advantage of what I considered an average Alabama defense that gave up 46 points to Florida in the SEC championship right. game, right? right? It was 52 to 46. Well, I expected that sort of a game That's except with a little lower, lower score Correct. because I thought Trey Sermon would pound away. So what happened on literally <laughs> the first play of the game? It's the first play of the game if we could please see this play because it looked pretty routine to me. This didn't look like anything special. I don't know. 
I, I don't really see it. I, I don't. But when you see this angle, Skip, and you see how they, that's how I broke my collarbone in that very same play. Did you? When well, you it get, looks like he broke his. I don't get, know. When but, you get T, he yeah. got pin, Skip. But, it, but it's on the fall. fall. It, you, it wasn't on the initial no, collision. You fall, and then the 300-pounder fall. Look at this, Skip. Right on top. Boom. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> and he's gone. <laughs> he's gone. And I'm like, what? Literally the first play. He's gone. And, and all of a sudden, you're back to Master Teague, who's not quite the bulldozer no. that Trey Sermon can be. Trey Sermon has a little bit of Derrick Henry. He's not yeah, Derrick Henry, right. but he can do that sort of damage. Right. But it, it requires 30 carries right. over the course of a game to control the clock and pound you down. Ohio State needed to win a game, Skip, something like 31-28, yeah. 28-24. Right. Once the game started getting into the mid-30s, the mm -hmm. 40s, that wasn't a game they could win. So guess what the final time of possession was <laughs> last night? Would you believe that Alabama had the ball for 37 minutes to Ohio State's 23 minutes? Well, you what do you think is going to happen? That. <laughs> That's going to happen. Okay, it flipped on its head. It went exactly the wrong way. And believe it or not, Alabama's offense converted on third and fourth down, eight of 13. Well, you're, you're in trouble. Yeah, you gotta they're, they're just going to keep the ball and keep the ball <laughs> and play keep away. And then guess what they were in the red zone last night? How about six for six? You're going to get wiped out. Yes. And they did. Now back to Devontae Smith. I've said this before to you on this show. I have never seen anything like him in college football. <laughs> so think about what just happened. Ohio State has a lot of athletes. They had COVID problems, and I don't know their depth chart well enough to know exactly how many had to miss the game. I know two defensive linemen had to miss the right. game, two starters in the defensive line. I'm not sure about the rest. But I also do know that they have a very good coaching staff oh, yeah. that, that knows how to play defense. Yeah. They, they have a pretty good concept. Even though Trevor Lawrence wound up throwing for 400, they gave him some problems right. because they put some heat on him. Yes. Okay? So they had 10 days. They didn't have the old month to get right. ready. But they, they had <laughs> 10 it. days right. to try to figure out how to stop the Heisman Trophy winner. Mean, meanwhile, the Heisman winner is winning the Heisman, and you know and I know how much that takes out of you. It's it's what they call the rubber chicken circuit, and, and the you've been going circuit, to the you award. Eat a bunch, yeah, you're, you're not working you're eating out. too much. <laughs> you're, you're distracted. You're pulled in twenty thousand ways, and you can't get focused in time to play the game of the year. Uh, I don't think it mattered. Because you know why, Skip? It was virtually. He didn't have to miss a game. I he didn't have to miss not. one practice. I guess Skip. not. He probably practiced. Okay. And Meanwhile, <laughs> you mentioned Sark, Steve Starkeesian, former coach at USC. What, what was happening to Sark during this period? He's getting hired by the University of Texas. It's a huge thing. It's a bombshell story. Yes. It's a lot of distraction because on the fly, you are torn in 20,000 ways yes. because you're trying to recruit on the fly. You're trying to recruit your staff on the fly. Yes. You're trying to keep the media in Austin, Texas and the state of Texas happy on the fly. Your head coach is furious with you. I've been through this so many times with so many staffs where somebody got hired before the Super Bowl. Right. Jimmy Johnson's staff, there was every year there's somebody and Jimmy was out of his mind and he should have been out of his mind because it's a lot of distraction yes. for a team trying to play the game of the right. year. Okay, so all that is mounting. And on top of it all, Jalen Waddell shouldn't have played last he night. There's no way. I felt for him, and I, I loved it that he got, if we could see the one, he, he got a little push pass, right. a little, like, two-yard pass. This is early in the game on the first drive. It's just like a little sort of shovel pass. And he ran. He looked okay while he was running inbounds. And then once he tried to put on the skids a little bit, it got him. It bit him. And he had to hobble all the way back across the field to the bench. Okay, I'm happy that he got to make the catch. He ended up catching three, three balls. balls. But why he came back in the game right. after that, I have no idea. It should have been a ceremonial like what they yes. did with Dixon. Yes. Dickerson, I think that uh, Landon Dixon. Dixon. The, yeah, the, right, the, the center. The center. He came had in for one last play. Okay. He should have just come okay. in. Okay, I got it because... You know, I get it that these kids have invested so much in this, but obviously I don't think they're getting paid. They're getting room, <laughs> board, and tuition. But, but for him, he's going to be a first-round pick. Yeah. Why are you risking it? And again, it, it, you're a kid and you get carried away. You, you think you're bulletproof. You, you do. Know, you, know, you do, Skip. I can come back. I'll be okay. You do. But again, he was clearly hampered. It reminded me a little bit of Terrell Owens in the Super Bowl against the Patriots. But T.O. didn't limp that bad. He didn't limp that bad. You could tell in the warm-ups right. that T.O. couldn't run the way he usually used to runs. run. Right, but he did. 
and it, skip, but that was only like five weeks. It yeah. was 11 weeks since he had his surgery. Okay. So I could just imagine if T.O. had, but like I said, Skip, T.O. had, you know, hyperbaric chambers. He T.O. had, the, you know, yeah. had the best of everything. Right. And I'm not saying Alabama doesn't have great medical staff, but T.O. was able to get things that I'm sure this kid wasn't able to get. Okay, so my point was you could just watch him in pregame because they had a lot of shots of him in the pregame, and he just didn't look right no. to me. Okay, you don't think the Ohio State didn't know that right. in pregame? So what are they thinking about their coverages? We don't have to really worry. Right. About right. him because he can fly now. Yes. He can run well, by he you. Get, running like that, he's not running by anybody. Okay, and just for the record, just so people let this sink in, there, there's not a Jerry Judy this year. There's not a Henry Ruggs no. this year because last year you had all four of those yeah. guys. Right. Well, it's a track team. Right. It's unbelievable. That's why I kept saying on Tua, are you sure? Are you sure? Right. Because it's like, well, I'll try because he had Najee last year also. Right. You know, well, I mm -hmm. can do this. I can do this. I can flip it to Najee. And again, the two best weapons in, in college football this year were that running back and especially that receiver. And they're on the same team. And they're on the same team. <laughs> okay, so here's what got me. Devontae Smith is about 6'1 and weighs 175. But as Ryan Day said after the game, he runs a lot stronger than he looks. He is. Because his physique is slender. But he runs with such strength. And that's why they skip the underestimate him because you look at his wiry frame and you're like, this dude 170 pounds. Oh, I'm finna, I'm finna break him yeah. in two. We can press him, we can jam him, we, we can knock him <laughs> off his route. No, you can't. Guess what? You cannot. <laughs> so they tried everything. They tried deep. They tried to, to come up short. They tried double. They tried triple. They tried zone. They tried man. They tried everything, and nothing even remotely worked because, as Ryan Day said after the game, we couldn't stop him from separating. He just separates right. from whatever coverage it is. Well, Skip, it's kind of hard to rotate coverage because you still got to worry about, like, running back. So if I put seven men in the box because, yeah. you, Skip, you have to – the dude had 30 touchdowns. He was the don't call, so he was the best running back in football. He so was. we got to pay and, him and, some and attention. Usually, the meat and potatoes defensive coordinator would say, "I need to worry about him first. Right, right. With this group, you better worry about that receiver right. first. And you see, they you see how they were they were really worried about Najee. They felt like we, our corners we're physical enough, yeah. we can match up. We got talent on the outside okay. also. All right, but you ain't got talent like this kid. Ooh. This, so, this kid was special, and he had a special year. So Najee ran for 83 yards, so that's not lethal, right? No. Did Najee hurt you catching the ball? Yeah, he caught his seven for 79. That's pretty good. So that, he, he hurt that, you catching it more than running. Right, that's right? out of the backfield for the touchdown. Okay, but did they really have any other weapon that no. you had to deal with? No. It's really, from, from a, a receiver perspective, it's Devontae or bust. Right. And you, you you give up 215 in the first half. I've never seen anything like this in my life. I, I was like, this dude, I thought Tyreek, I said, this dude had literally pulling the Tyreek in the first yeah, half. That's Tyreek, Tyreek got 203 in the first quarter. But this dude got, tw Skip, 12 catches for 215 and three touchdowns in a half. In a half against a defense that is clearly just completely poised to try to stop you. Like I said, you do this against Missouri. You do this against Arkansas that doesn't have the level of talent. The I'll, throw, I'll throw Vanderbilt Vander in there. Okay, okay. you do that against Vanderbilt, yep. Skip, and everybody's like, oh, that's uh, Vanderbilt. He yeah, should have yeah, done yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, Skip, yeah. that's the Ohio State. You know what they represent. I the do. Bosas, and they have Jeff Okuda. They got Denzel Ward. They got they loaded on that side of the ball. Okay, and now back to the quarterback. All year, I have resisted saying this about Mac Jones <laughs> because I keep saying product of, product of, product of, because there's too much talent. Well, there's not as much talent as Tua had a year no, ago, no, no, especially no, no, at no, wideout. No, 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 no. And yet, he was Joe Burrow-esque. In fact, I, I have he, to he, say— he, he might be more accurate than he, Joe Burrow. He went a little, like, just a little click above Joe Burrow because his QBR was the greatest— Ever, Ever in the history of college football. Completion percentage. So, so the, the, if you go down the, the QBR list, it, it now it goes Mac Jones, then it was Kyler, then it was Joe Burrow. Right. I, I can't argue with that anymore. Yeah, I don't know, Skip, okay. if anybody's going to have a season throwing the ball like this. If you look at, what, 41 touchdowns, five picks, you look at the completion percentage, yeah. you look at his QBR, the efficiency in which he threw it. Skip, this is unbelievable.
Okay. People don't realize how hard it is to do what he did. And everything is in stride. Guys are not having to break stride and fall, catch the ball and fall down because he threw it behind them. That, that sprint option, and you, when he, uh, uh, Devontae started and came back, it's in stride. He hit 18. I, I, I don't really know his name. He yeah, reminds you of Hunter. Matchy. Uh, uh, no, that's no. Okay. Mitch is eight. Okay. He reminds you of Hunter Renfro. Oh, okay, I got it. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the little slot receiver. Yeah. But everything is in stride. Give yeah. the guy an opportunity to run. Give the guy an opportunity to protect himself. I, after watching LSU skip, we came in. Did Joe Burrow just have the greatest season? I believe Joe had a, a little better season. It would have been interesting to see had they played the full. They were two games short. So I don't. he's not going to get to 60 touchdowns. But 5,000 yards within the realm of possibility. And the, he the, might the reason pro- I rank Joe a little higher is because LSU, in the history of its program, had never had a quarterback. Right. Nothing like right. that. So he came out of nowhere, obviously transferring from Ohio right. State, had a mediocre first year, and then all of a sudden, boom, took Still, off. I really knew Mac Jones could play when I watched him against Auburn. Although they lost the game because he threw two pick sixes, if you watch the way he threw the ball and then you watch him in the bowl game against Michigan, yep. you say, this dude can play. Yep. The question was, were enough players around him coming? Was Najee going to come back? Was Devontae going to come yep. back? Was and, that and offensive I do line? think this is a key point. Those two came back for one more year when they didn't have to. Both right. would have been, I'm pretty sure, first-round picks. Coach Saban mentioned something last night. He said sometimes guys can come back and increase their value. Yep. Devontae might have been a late first, maybe early second. Yep. What he's done now is played himself in possibly to a top-five pick. He's a top-five pick. He, he will be. Najee's probably going to go into the first round now. The offensive lineman, Leatherwood, he's going to be a first-rounder. They're going to have six first-round <laughs> picks, <laughs> which is... That's all you need to know. And Skip, like, I, and I was talking about Skip. I don't know. They don't have the depth at D line like when they had Payne and Allen and Quinny Williams and Jerry they Reed. They do not. And Dominic Tom. They don't have. But Barmore, I don't know how Coach Saban. Coach Saban must be got a clone or something because he go find them. And if you look at them, Skip, they all build alike. It's the same. They, they, they're like six two, yep. three hundred plus, and they are agile. Yep, and they don't look. <laughs> They don't, look, they don't look the part. No. But he he didn't look in great shape to me, but, nope. but he is just unblockable, <laughs> just slithery, just yes. knifing through, yes. blowing up plays. Yes. And now we're back to the offense and back to Mac Jones. It, will he be a first round? Yes, he's risen up the board. He's going to be somebody's first round pick. We'll, we'll talk more about him versus Justin Fields later. Okay. But, but it boiled down to me last night that – Remember, that game early second quarter was 14-all because he did make one mistake because he, he got blindsided right, by the blitz. He, right. he just was unawares, and he turned, yep. and the blitz was in his face, and he lost the football. Right. And Justin Fields, to his credit, took it home, and all of a sudden it's 14-all early second quarter. And then a tornado hit. <laughs> you need, Skip, after that, you really needed to get your defense to get a stop. You, you just need one stop, and you, they couldn't. And it was 21-3 to three the rest of the second right. quarter. And, 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 so, and so now, for all intents and purposes, Skip, it's over. And then guess what happens? Alabama's getting the ball out of the half. Yep. So you really need to not let them put any points on the board. I know you only held them to three. And you got, like I said, had Devontae not gone out, that game was about to be over at that moment. The moment they go up 42-14, to 14, yep. 42-17, yep. that game's about to be over. Give, give them credit. They kept fighting. I also thought, Skip, the hip was more of an issue than what Justin Fields led on because he didn't seem so a, a willing participant to run the football. He, he was almost I mean, like, when, he, when he did get loose, he really right. got loose. He was almost forced. He's like, man, all right, there's nobody on the left side. Yep. There's nobody on the right. Let me just take off. I'll buy that. Yep, I agree. But he still had – he was pretty good yeah, running He only had like three, 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 three or four six, carries. Six carries. No, yeah. he had six carries for 73 yards. It's, it – but then they started to get, they started to get home. They started getting closer and closer. They started getting closer and closer, knocking him down. But Skip, I did 52-24. That's the second fifty point game scored in, in, the, in the college playoffs. So statistically, this is the greatest offense in the history of college football. I, I'm partial to some in the past. Yes. you can argue different eras, different cases. Yes, yes. You can go back to the Army team in 1944, <laughs> average. 50, well, 54 points a game. Yeah, it's the four horses. Okay, out. but then my Oklahoma team, 1971, is the greatest game ever played against Nebraska. They lost, but but they they averaged 
I think it was 47 a game. Mm -hmm. And I like, because it was the advent of the wishbone and nobody knew how to stop Greg Pruitt and the wishbone. Right. Okay, so that's a whole nother era. And then- Wasn't Joe Washington on that team too? Mm -hmm, but he came he the, the next year. Okay. But, but the point was that then we got all the way to USC with Matt Leinert and Reggie Bush, our man Reggie, yes. and both of them from Fox, mm -hmm. obviously now. And I thought those, because that offense destroyed my Sooners in the National Championship. They put Championship up 55. In that same stadium yes. in, what was it, 2004, I think it was. Right. So the point is, we could argue all day, but I, I got to tell you, just on sheer explosiveness, I've never seen anything like Devontae Smith in the history of college football. No. So when you have that guy, he, he's even a red zone. He, he's unguardable in the red zone because they, they would motion him and then just look, let him run. Because you, yeah, you can't stop him. Because not only can he run the ball and give you 200 yards rushing, he can catch the ball and give you 100 yard receiving. Mm -hmm. He's good outside. They, like yeah. you said, they throw it to him and they brought a blitz. They swing him up the outside. He's not just content on catching the ball. Okay, they tackle me here. He's looking to get the ball in the end zone. Yeah. He stops. You're still talking about Devontae. No, I'm talking about oh, uh, not, not Jay. Oh, I'm, I'm talking about Devontae oh, in the red yeah, zone. Well, yeah, I mean, he's, he's unstoppable. No, you, can't, no, you can't do it. How do you do that? He's 107. Don't you think of a red zone target needing to be 6'6"? Yeah, and he wow. should have had four touchdowns. Mack overthrew him on the first touchdown. Yeah. He had him wide open on that when they yeah. ran the pick on Wade. Mm. He way. makes it look easy. Uh, we will. We got to say congratulations to Alabama. Got a snake down there. Honestly, you don't need to win the game. Honestly, that was a special game, a special performance. Congrats to all that. the athletes for getting through a crazy season. There was a lot of sacrifice. No mercy. What's up, undisputed listeners? It's your boy Shay Sharp. I wanted to tell you about my new podcast, Club Shay Shay, where we always do something before two something. Each week, I sit down with a guest for a drink and conversation, and as host and proprietor of Club Shay Shay, I welcome in esteemed guests such as Snoop Dogg, Floyd Money Mayweather, LeVar Ball, Isaiah Thomas, just to mention a few. Whether I'm talking to an athlete, a musician, an actor, or a lifelong friend, Club Shay Shay is a place where people share inspiring and motivational stories about their journeys to prominence. The new episode drops every Monday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe to Club Shay Shay now and make sure you never miss a new episode. Now back to under. No mercy. Bill Belichick announced he would decline to receive the Presidential Medal of Freedom offered to him by Donald Trump. In a statement, Belichick wrote, I was flattered out of respect for what the honor represents and admiration for prior recipients. Subsequently, the tragic events of last week occurred and the decision has been made to not move forward with the award. Above all, I am an American citizen with great reverence for our nation's values, freedom, and democracy. Shannon, yesterday you said you thought he should accept the honor. So why do you think he decided to turn it down? He realized that President Trump was trying to use him as a pawn. And the one thing that Coach Belichick will not be used as as a pawn. I generally believe he was conflicted. That is my friend. I have the utmost respect for him. I don't always agree, Skip. Sometimes we don't always agree with some of the things that our friends say or what they do. But 30, 20 years, 30 years in the making, it's just hard to turn your back on the guy. Yep. But he also, and he said something very interesting, Skip. He says, I, I, I love this country. And what transpired on Wednesday at a lot of the incitement by this president, I don't agree with. He's my friend, but this is unacceptable. And... He said, one of the most rewarding things in my professional uh, took place, uh, my professional career took place in 2020, went through great leadership within our, uh, our team, conversation about social justice, equality, human rights, moved to the forefront and, and became action. Had he accepted this award, had he said that, that would have been nothing. Skip, we see a lot of people when George Floyd, when the George Floyd movement and the Black Lives Matter, everybody's talking about diversity, equality, yada, yada, yada. But we have seen a lot of that to be implemented. We have seen a lot of those changes to take place. Coach Belichick says, I'm not just going to talk about it. I'm going to be about it. I heard the, uh, the uh, McCourty brothers say, we had great conversation, open dialogue, and that was led by Coach Belichick. So he understood. I can't say this, do that, and accept this award. I cannot, cannot in good conscience. Cannot. And, and like I said, Skip, you, you know, they didn't, if I'm not mistaken, they said it was a scheduling conflict. I don't think they went to the White House. Or did they go? I think they might have turned that down in 2019. Oh, 2019. With the 20, because uh, they won the Super Bowl. Didn't they win the Super Bowl? 2018. So it would have been 2019. Mm -hmm. They went to the. So for me, Skip, I just think he did the right thing, knowing what transpired uh, in, in America. Um, on Wednesday, and it was a black eye in American history. It was. Uh, it's not a good look. 
Yep. But I want some other guys, Skip. And one guy I want to hear, I want to hear Dabo. Mm. I want to hear from Dabo Sweeney, because Dabo Sweeney had a lot to say about Black Lives Matter, how he couldn't mm -hmm. get down with it. And he was one of the first ones, Skip, that said, you know, if this country is so bad, why don't you leave? All those people that took over the Capitol, that was at that rally, if this country is so bad and you don't like it, why don't you leave? You see, there's an assumption that because if I'm white, I'm entitled to something, and black, you should just tolerate it, be grateful that you're here, and be grateful that you have something. You see, the, 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 we see things, and everybody saw this. Coach Belichick, kudos. Skip, Coach Belichick can be cool, cruel. He can be callous. Yep. But I believe every football, everything that he does football-related, he believes gives him a chance to win. I hated it, and I caught him to the carpet when he deactivated Taekwon Underwood the night before the Super Bowl. After that man had them brought all his family down, expecting to see him play, he deactivated him for a defensive lineman that didn't set foot on the field. Yep. But I believe Coach Belichick believed that they were, they were thin at the defensive line, mm -hmm. and I needed just in case. So... Even though it was cruel, I believe he did it because he felt it would help him win the football game. Yep. Just like I believe this. You might think he, the cutoff, he doesn't smile, and he's very the monotone, he doesn't give you anything. But Coach Belichick is a lot smarter than people give him credit oh. for. And the military background. And it, 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 Skip, it's one thing to say, oh, yeah, yeah, the military, military, yada, yada, yada. But he believes it. There, there, there's something about Coach Belichick that's, that's different even though a lot of times he doesn't show it. But this was the right thing to do. Given the certain... Now, if this had not have happened, Skip, I don't believe... I, I believe he would have accepted this award. Mm -hmm. But given the totality and the gravity of what transpired last Wednesday, yep. Coach Belichick in good conscience could not accept this award. And when you refer to his military background, you mean... He, I think if, uh, he, he didn't go, but no. he, uh, his dad was at a coach at the Naval Academy. For 30 years. Yes. At, yeah. And remember, he grew up in Ann uh, Bill Annapolis. grew up in Annapolis. Annapolis correct. So, yeah. so he was steeped in the Naval culture. Yes, yes. And is still highly regarded in Annapolis that Navy. Yes, so, yes. And, no, I'm not, no, he has yeah. no military he, background. He, he no didn't sense. serve. Okay, right, just right. Just for the record. Right. Okay, got you. Okay, I have never been the biggest Belichick fan, have highest regard for him as a defensive coordinator type of defensive guru, mm -hmm. genius, if you want to go that far. There's also a legacy in his football background of cheating, accusations of mm -hmm. cheating. And I still say that Brady was more responsible for the dynasty than Belichick. But sweep that away for the moment. I said last night, good for Bill Belichick. Yes. He couldn't accept this on so many levels. And I believe he knew he couldn't. I also think he's shrewd enough operator to know that deep, deep down, the mere fact that this was publicized, that he was slated to right. receive the award, in the minds of most people, he got it, right? right? He right. just didn't go to the White House for right. the photo op, right. being a PR pawn that he would have become Correct. for the current president. Correct. To, to, that, that he stopped short of that, I cannot do this. So I, I, I'm proud of him. Way to go, Bill Belichick. It was a pretty powerful statement from a very close friend of Donald Trump's yes. that at the last second he finally said, no, even I can't do I cannot. this. Because to your point, what happened a week ago, Wednesday, or last Wednesday it was, mm -hmm. it was a stain on, on the history of this country because – one of the most sacred structures in this country got invaded with rioters making it all the way to the floor of the Senate chamber. <laughs> I, I, the, the more I think about it, the worse it gets. If somebody, Skip, if somebody would have told you at some point in time, the Capitol will be overrun and they'll be actually inside, not for photo ops, but doing destruction and, and rioting, would you have believed it in America? No, no. it's impossible. No way. And what if I told you even though some might have been armed, not sure about that. What if I told you nobody pulled a gun? Nobody had a weapon. Right. They had some clubs. They had some chemical spray. Right. But it was clubs and chemical spray, no firearms. I saw no firearms. None were used right. in the storming of the Capitol. How is that possible? Aha. We know how it was possible. It was an inside job. And the FBI is investigating They are that. investigating, and I believe uh, Donald Trump will be prosecuted for this, yep. for inciting and enabling somehow internally 
that the word was sent, you will stand down and let them pass. Skip, it's kind of like the, uh, when a Brinks car, when somebody grows into a Brinks and they rob a Brinks and no shots are fired. But that's the inside job. Huh? And really? you got two arms, you got two armed guards, and okay. then nobody got hurt, and they only got the money, they didn't have to die in it. Okay, and obviously now 15 of the Capitol cops are being investigated. Two have already been suspended. I, I read reportedly one was fired. Yes. And I, it may have been the photo op one who was actually do, doing, I mean, taking selfie. selfies with, with some of the Trump Or it might have been the one with the MAGA hat. It could have been. Could, I think he was suspended, yeah. I, I believe. So obviously some of these Capitol cops were just Trump loyalists. We get that. And others might have been told, uh, just let them pass. Let, we want no bloodshed right. here. And it was report I saw yesterday on CNN for a while. I was watching in the afternoon to see what the update was on the story. And uh, there were some reports that where was the National Guard? Well, they were supposed to have been called four hours earlier. And I don't know what happened. Right. I think an order came down from above. Stand. They will not be there for a right. while. And right? you know the military now in the Black Lives Matter scale, what it was about, show of force. They were, for mm -hmm. not only were they forced, they were reinforcement sent. Yep. See, Skip, here's the thing. And I, and I get it's very political, it's very heightened now. And they said the best thing is to unite and move forward. But Skip, you can have no unity without accountability. Mm -hmm. Skip, you can't do something to me, not acknowledge it and say, okay, we still cool because I've learned. But no, you haven't. Mm -hmm. And if you if you want to say you want you, uh, to unite the 139, I think it's 139. I think it's 130, maybe Repu House Republicans and the seven senators say the election was free and clear. Mm -hmm. Say it was no fraud. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to want unity and to move forward, say that. But you won't because you still perpetuated this skip in you. And you say if y'all come down here, we could possibly overthrow this. So skip, what do you think they're gonna do if they believe if they come down there? do what they did, they could possibly put Donald Trump back in office. This yep. is what they did. Okay. So obviously there's a movement underway to unseat the president before January 20th. Yes. Okay. So it was clear to me that Donald Trump reached out and thought, oh, he's the coach of the Patriots. Yes. Oh, well, what, what a great association this could be. Of course. He's the GOAT coach. I'll bring him to the White House for a photo op. Okay, it'll it'll feel good. Right. It'll make me fame by association, right? Mm -hmm. And Bill Belichick, to his credit, said no. He saw it for what it was. Yeah, and to your point, you read that part of his statement, and that just leaped off the page to me about that what meant the mo one of the most rewarding things in my professional career were the conversation. That's all he's talking about. The conversations about social justice, equality, and human rights that we started to have as a team last year. You don't think you would undermine those if you yeah, went and accepted absolutely, that? Absolutely. In arm in arm with Donald Trump for a big photo op at the White House? And Skip, he read, he also said, I also represent my family and the New England Patriots. Mm. He said, continuing those efforts while remaining true to the people, the team, and the country I love outweighs the benefits of any individual award. And as I said yesterday, they do have a bunch of cap room and they're going to be going after yes, free agents. Yes. And I'm not saying that some of the free agents might not, that they might be Trump supporters. I don't know. But I, I'm going to guess that a majority of the free agents are not Trump supporters. Right. So is it possible you'd want one big free agent who would say, really? I, I don't want to be there with you. Skip, Coach Belichick doesn't realize, maybe he does, the gravity of him saying no what that meant to his team, mm -hmm. especially a lot of the black players on his team. Yep. Because a lot of times people provide lip service. As my grandfather used to tell my brother and I, I see better than I hear. I heard what you said, but I see what you went and got. Mm -hmm. Coach Belichick says, nah, I will not be used in this manner. What transpired is unacceptable. It's wrong. Has no place in America. I love, I love my country more than I love an individual ward. But this was not about building or bringing unity. This is what's tearing our, our, us apart. Yep. And everybody keeps saying, well, impeachment, all it is is further divides us. No, you can skip. You can have, until you get accountability, and everybody, and I hear them all saying that, Skip, he's learned his lesson. You said that in Russia. You said that in Ukraine. You said that when he called the Georgia Secretary of State. And yet he did this again. Skip, this is how it worked. If somebody does something, and they're not held accountable or punishment. Mm -hmm. Skip, they don't learn their lesson, they become more emboldened. Yep. Well, I can do this. And they keep doing more and more and more, and they keep taking more and more. That's how it works. Very few people 
will do wrong and stop on their own. You have to put a stop to it. So yes, they need to take whatever actions and skip all this notion about all this cabinet, how they're resigning. Mm -hmm. Well, they're resigning, Skip. They don't want to be a part of the 25th Amendment because it takes the VP and half of its cabinet. It does. Well, if you don't have any cabinet, mm -hmm. how can you have the invoke the 25th Amendment? Good point. See, they think they're slick, Skip. They think, oh, we do it. If this hurts them. Now, they said they got fear. They got credible threats. All 50 capitals, arm mm -hmm. and the Homeland Security to resign. But he said he resigned because of the courts. Mm -hmm. You stayed on this long, the court system said you didn't, you didn't, you didn't meet the standard. Mm -mm. But you stayed on. But now, in the transportation, and Bessie DeVos, man, they they, they some clown, but that's okay. Y'all mm -hmm. finna get up out of there, but he's still getting impeached. Mm -hmm. Only president with two impeachments mm -hmm. on his resume. Which brings us to the close of this, which is Bill Belichick is smart enough to look what's about to happen. This, this is going to be 10, what are we, Nine days Nine away. Eight. eight now. It's a rocky road. Yeah. Well, what could he do? What could he do in eight days? You said that. What could he yeah. do in two months? Yeah. You could do a lot if you're still lot. the most powerful man in the world. Right. So Bill Belichick, if he had accepted, would be at extreme risk for the next nine well, days. Well, call Belichick back. He's my new favorite coach again for like for a while. 36 hours. Yep. <laughs> mm. Okay. Well, you, you, you said he'd have a better record than Tom Brady. And, man, you know, that's, but, but, after he did that right there, yeah. oh, he won the Super Bowl. It. He won the, he Super, won the Bowl. Super Bowl by doing that. In, in a lot of ways, he did. <laughs> I'll okay. give you that. Interesting. So, Belichick, back being your favorite guy. Yep. Uh, Alabama, still your favorite college football team. Let's talk about that game that we saw last night a bit more, guys. Well, Devontae Smith got a huge part of the attention last night. The biggest win may have actually come from Nick Saban. Tied finished the strangest college football season in memory. A perfect 13-0, and his seventh career title broke a tie with Alabama legend Paul Bear Bryant for most ever by a college coach. When asked if Saban was the greatest ever, his QB, Mac Jones, replied, of course he is. I mean, how can he not be? He does it the right way. He recruits He recruits well, but more importantly, develops great players. So, Shannon, does this win clinch it for Saban as the greatest coach ever? For me, he had already done that, Skip, considering what he had done at two different programs. Um, and if you remember, Skip, uh, Les Miles won a national championship with LSU with the players that he all recruited. So he had left and gone to uh, uh, Florida, uh, Florida, had gone to the Dolphins, obviously. And then he comes back, skipped seven titles in this era. He got six in 12 years. And as he said with last night, we tell it talking to Scott Van Pelt, I just happened to turn it on, Skip. Mm -hmm. He says, it's the two that I lost that keep me up at night. Mm -hmm. The man, Skip, the man who won seven titles, he says, but it's the two that he lost that keeps him up. And you look at what he's doing in his skip, what, 11 of the last 15 years, the ch national champion has come out of the SEC. Yep. That's what he has to play every single year. That's true. He's playing LSU. They're mm -hmm. in his division. Every year, he's playing Auburn. Every year, they're in his division. And he's probably going to have to get Florida, and he's going to probably have to get past Georgia yep. in order to get to the college football playoff and get into the national uh, mm -hmm. uh, title contention. Yep. Skip, it. Uh, every player that this man has recruited since he's gone to Alabama, if they stayed at least three years, has won a national title. Yep. He's been to eight national championship games in 14 years. He's won six in 12 years. And if you look at the, if you, Skip, if you look at the players that he put into the NFL, Skip, I, I don't know, it's irrefutable now. The two greatest college football coaches in the history of college football both coached at the same university, the University of Alabama. Coach Paul Bear Bryant mm -hmm. and one St. Nick Saban. Skip it. There, there ain't no question about it now. He stands alone. If you get, you got a Mount Rushmore of college coaches, I don't know who the other two faces is going to be. Probably Woody Hayes, because he has five, but Coach Saban is to the far left. Coach Bryant is next to him. Okay, you put uh, uh, Coach Hayes there, the third slot. Now, I don't know. You want to go Frank Leahy? You want to go somewhere else, Skip, with the great Notre Dame teams? You want to go Jim McKay, John Robinson? I don't care. But Coach Saban stands alone. He's on Mount Olympus, and he's by himself right now. So that is hard to argue at this moment, <laughs> seven national championships. My only issue with Coach Saban is he was always known as a defensive specialist, a guru, mm -hmm. maybe even a defensive genius. Yes. 
That has not been the case at Alabama. He has become more of a CEO of a recruiting dynamo. <laughs> it, it's a machine. It's a juggernaut, a recruiting juggernaut that just feeds off itself year after year. <laughs> and going forward, this this recruiting period, they just won. They swept. They number one in the 2021. <sighs> So here we go again. They signed, what was it, three of the top eight receivers coming out for, for next year's class. Really? And remember, that kid Bryce Young they got last year out of Pasadena here yeah. in Southern California they was the here. top dual threat quarterback in the nation yep. last year, which is why a lot of people thought Mac Jones would not see the light of play right. this year, that Bryce Young would just step in there in preseason and just take it over. Mm -hmm. And no, Mac Jones knows to, he, he knew the system and he's got a little swag to him too. Yes. And he just said, no, I, I got this. And it was clear, obviously, to Coach Saban from the start, no, we got to go with it. He's a junior, you know, right. but he's a, I think he's a Richard. fourth year. Yeah, he's a fourth year junior. Because he's on that, he came in with Devontae, he, he was did. on that national championship team with, with two or three the game winning touchdown. Correct. Okay. So they are just loaded with it. Their, their offensive line is a pipeline to the National <laughs> Football League. They did it so again. They, they did it again. So for, for me, as the CEO of this, what, what I admire the most about what he has done at Alabama is they started out as a defensive juggernaut. Right. But then there was a good quote from him I read in USA Today today. Ball has changed, as in football has yeah. changed. It's more wide open, more spread. And this team has adapted. Our offense was the key to our success this year. Well, obviously it was. We were an okay defensive team. And I'll give you okay right. at best right. defensive team. But as as I've told you on the show, we've gone back and forth. I've called St. Nick, ain't Nick a yeah. few times. Because over the last, if you just look since 23, so, so uh, 2013. So in the last seven seasons, 12 times they've given up 40 plus points right. over set the, just the last seven seasons. It's 13 overall since he went to Alabama. Right. Well, it, it's one after another of 44, 46, 48, 48. They gave up 46, obviously, to Florida right. in the SEC championship game during the year this year. They gave up 48 again to Ole Miss, which seems like it happens every year. They give up 40 something mm -hmm. to Ole Miss. But think about now, what you say, Skip. You think about that. In 14 years, he's given up 13 40-point games. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of teams that give up three or four of those a season. And he realized, Skip, he fought it for as long as he could. He didn't like the up-tempo. He's like, guys are going to get mm -hmm. hurt. Is that what you want? Guys staying on the field 12, 15, 17 plays. Remember, early in this run, it always came <laughs> down to Alabama and LSU, and they played one game in Tuscaloosa that was 6-3, to three, right? And, and then and it came down to missed field goals. And you remember the national championship game. Yeah. And they say, well, we really don't want to see two teams from the same conference have this happen again. And Alabama won 21 to nothing. Right. Okay. So the point is that every time he gives up 40-something, I say, really? That's that's St. Nick right. and his defense? Well, he swung it completely around. To his credit, he just said, you know what? I can't do that anymore because this game is going that direction. Correct. So I have high regard that in the off seasons, he would sit back and say, I think I better go get Lane Kiffin. Or I think I better go get Steve Sarkeesian. Remember, Skip, he put Steve Sarkeesian on his thing as just an assistant. He did. He did that with Bush Jones. He uh, did. He was the former coach of Tennessee, and that's what he now does. Now going to Arkansas he's not, Right. Yeah. So, Skip, mm -hmm. he keeps him around. He's like, okay, just in case, because you see Loxley leave, you see all of his people leave. Yep. He had Jimbo Fisher was on he his did. staff at one point in time. There are a lot of guys. Uh, 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 Kirby Smart. And what he does, Skip, the, remember, the key to survival is not speed, strength, size. It's adaptability. Yep, that's what it was. That's what happened. He adapted, <laughs> he adapted. On the fly. And you have to swallow your own yes, defensive ego Because to do he's that. a defensive guy, Skip. Yep. But everything is wide open. You can't, Skip, the days of holding somebody to 10 points consistently, like they could do when he first got there, when they had all them stud defensive players, Skip. They had the C.J. Mosley. They had the, all those big-time mm -hmm. defensive they linemen. Did. It's not like that anymore. It's too much space. The guys are too good. And if you notice, Skip, I say, Skip, they're not the same team. That's why he inserted Tua over Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts was a phenomenal quarterback, Skip, but you got to be able to make the routine throws mm -hmm. all the time. Mac Jones didn't miss a throw last night. So Tua helped, and then he hurt because he stuck with Tua then 
to yeah. going forward, mm -hmm. and and he was beat up and whatever. Yes. But then remember, he got to Clemson. This is the other loss. He yeah. he lost to Deshaun right. the second go round right. against Deshaun. And it took an all world performance from Deshaun to win One that game. One second on the clock, you threw the game yeah. with it. Uh, Hunter Renfro. Hunter Renfro. Okay, and then two of the second time around against Trevor Lawrence. That's what was Trevor Lawrence's coming out party. Right. That was forty four to sixteen. Uh, Clemson, right. and remember, Alabama was ahead 16 to 14, and then just got blown off the field 30 to nothing. Yep. And I'm sure Coach Saban had to sit back in the offseason and say, I, I got to have a better quarterback. Yep. I, I got to get better. I need somebody who can be more efficient than that. Mm -hmm. And here they came back again. Skip, I, and I think the thing what makes Coach Saban, why I put him at the top, Skip, you know, remember, there were only a handful of teams that used to be on, football, on TV. There were only a handful, maybe three or four. And all the top prospects went to one school. They went to a handful of schools. Now, recruiting is universal. Guys go all over the place. I mean, just because you're in Florida, that doesn't mean you're going to one of the three Florida schools. Just because you're in Alabama doesn't mean you're going mm -hmm. to Alabama. Or you're in uh, 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 Louisiana, you're going to LSU. And so now to go in there, and guys are basically saying, Skip, when you go to one of these schools, yep. yes, you want to get an education. Who gives me the best chance to go play on Sundays? And right now they're looking at it. They say Clemson, they say Alabama, they say Ohio State gives me the best chance to go play, fulfill my obligation, and get myself out of the environment which I can't. But mostly they're saying Alabama. Alabama. <laughs> mostly they are <laughs> because they're winning it every year. Well, after a while, you you can't screw it up. Yeah. You, you you got too much talent. For the long La last night, did he not have the best team? Yes. yes. Skip, what do we always say? Man, if Coach Saban ever got a quarterback yep. with that defense, yeah, with think, that offensive line I, I and that running back. I think for the longest time, he didn't want a quarterback. No. He wanted a game manager. Right. He wanted somebody that he could win, you know, 10 to 6 with if he had to. This is when you knew Coach Saban was a great coach, an all-time great coach. Yep. He took a guy in Blake Sims who was a wide receiver and a DB. Mm hmm and he got to the semifinals of the national championship, of, of, of the college football playoffs, with a guy that was yep. on the, that was a, a, a wide receiver and a DB. They lost 42-35, mm -hmm. and it took a historic performance by Zeke Elliott. It did. So that lets you know, Skip. Yeah, he 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 he's he's alone right now. Yep. He he's in front of uh, uh, as much, and I don't know if you're gonna get a whole lot of argument from anybody. He's in front of Coach Bryant right now. So in the end, last night. I look up to sum this up, and Devontae's <laughs> out of the game, and I look up, and some little guy catches a touchdown pass, and I look down. Who, who is that guy? His name is Slade Bolden, a little white guy. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that Hunter Renfro. I'm that like, little, huh? Hunter Renfro. Oh, is that the one yeah, you Yeah, that's the one. Okay. Yeah, that's Hunter Renfro. And, and I look him up. He was the player of the year in Louisiana. <laughs> the player of the year. Okay, and you got it. And he probably was a quarterback. <laughs> he, he did play quarterback. In high school. He was 50-50 yeah. quarterback three, receiver. Yeah. Yeah. But you can, he, he, can, he can run. Yes. Okay, here we go again. They're just loaded. We'll just plug in another yes. one. Yes, and Devontae was from, from Louisiana. Louisiana, okay. And that's what and that's what Coach Saban can do, do now, Skip. It, it was very few when Coach Bryant, mm -hmm. all the guys from the South went to yep. the Southern school. Mm -hmm. The guys in the West, they went to the Western school. Yeah. Now Coach Saban can go with Najee Harris from California. Yeah. The tentacles are, 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 are across the I just the told state. you, Bryce Young's going to be their quarterback next year, and he's from... Los Angeles. They asked Najee, why did he go? Yep. He says, I want to dispel this myth that California kids can't play in the SEC. Ooh. Okay. Well, he did that. <laughs> yeah. did that. 30 touchdowns later, I said he did a great job yes, of doing that. Listen to this, though, guys. Every player that Saban has recruited that has stayed at least three years has won at least one national championship. That if that is want? not a recruiting pitch, I just don't What'd know. What you want? What is? That's pretty impressive to think about Pull that. Pull a pad right and throw them rings on the table. Yep. Wow. Congratulations <laughs> to Alabama once again. What a show last night and really all season. No mercy. Hey, Undisputed listeners. It's Charlotte Wilder here to tell you about my new podcast with Mark Titus called The People Sports Podcast. It comes out every Thursday, and Mark and I take one of the big stories of the week, and then we go off on tangents you never saw coming. This might mean that we start talking about the Dodgers winning the World Series and end up wondering if Knicks fans deserve happiness or begin with LeBron's greatness and end up drafting our ultimate beer league softball team made up of old athletes. Whatever it is, the only rule of the show is that it has to be fun and funny because these days we can all use as many laughs as we can get. 
So check it out wherever you get your podcasts and come down weird sports rabbit holes with us. We can't wait to have you. No mercy. No one back down. The Eagles announced yesterday that they were parting ways with head coach Doug Peterson after five years in Philly. Peterson is less than three years removed from leading Philadelphia to its only Super Bowl victory. And this season finished in last place in a uh, a kind of bad NFC East division with a 4-11-1 record. Peterson took heat all season for how he handled game management and the quarterback situation. First bench, benching Carson Wentz for Jalen Hurts down the stretch. And then, of course, playing Nate Sutton. Felt over Hertz in the fourth quarter of its week 17 finale. Uh, Shannon, what does this mean for Carson Wentz? Well, I think it means more likely he stays. Skip, I, said, I saw this coming, and I said the moment that he did this, he's not, he's not going to be able to go back to Wentz. And he's done whatever relationship they might have had, he's done irreparable harm to that relationship. And so I knew one of these guys had to go. Now, I always felt it was going to be Dougie P for the simple fact do you want 30 to $60 million of dead cap or you want to go get you a new coach uh, uh, for, say, $5, 6000000 million a year? And I, thought, I think Jeffrey Lurie thought that. There's a lot of reports circulating that Dougie P didn't seem, he was reluctant to go outside and ha- how yep. to hire different eyes. Right. He wanted to hire from within. Mm-hmm. And Jeffrey Lurie, like, no, the problem is within. I needed a fresh set of eyes. I yep. want some fresh ideas. Yours have grown stale. Skip, the thing with Dougie P, he called plays the exact same way he did in 2017 when he had that magical season. But he had his offense was completely healthy. Yep. You can't call plays when, although D-Jack wasn't there. Alshon has been nicked all year. Mm -hmm. Goddard and Ertz have been nicked all year. Your offensive line has been in shambles all year. Miles Sanders has been in and out of the lineup. Okay, you make the switch from Carson Wentz. You're like, okay, let's see what Jalen got. And then some for some unknown reason, the last game of the season, Washington is on a, 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 a with an unhealthy quarterback. His calf is not functioning so bad that he doesn't play the following week. So he was healthy enough to play the week before, but not healthy enough to play the week after. True. Jeffrey Lord looking at that and said, hold on, so we could have won this game. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to be trying to get Jalen Hurts ready. And you talking about you want to look at Nate Sutfield? Yep. Nate Sutfield is not going to be a part of any future with the Eagles as far as starting. So why would you want to take a look at him? It was almost like, and I think Jeffrey Lewis looking like, and I'm sure maybe some of the uh, players chimed in, Dougie don't have the locker room anymore. Mm. After that, what he did on Sunday night? I would agree. Your team, you can do what you want to do with it, but guys don't look at him the same. Mm -hmm. And Jeffrey Lewis said, what did he say, Skip? He said he felt in the best interest that both, both parties Go their separate ways. Mm-hmm. He said, I don't want to get into, did he deserve to stay? Did he deserve to get fired? That's, 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 a, that's, a, different, that's a different argument. Mm-hmm. Both parties should go their separate ways. It's not so much what he said, it's what he didn't say. So I'm not surprised by this. I saw this coming. I felt that one of these guys had to leave. I always felt it was going to be Dougie P. I'm not surprised that it happened. Mm. Nor am I, but I am very happy as a lifelong Cowboy fan that this happened because it means Carson Wentz is back in power in Philadelphia. And he's going to win the division. You call him walk it to him, Wentz, and I call him (laughs) give it to him, Wentz, because he gives it and gives it and gives it away. He had a disastrous year this year. He led this league in giveaways. He did. He led this league in turnover-worthy plays, says Pro Football Focus, which ranked him the 34th best quarterback in the league. They have their only 32 starters. So he was behind some backups, huh? Yeah, some who started (laughs) a little bit here and there. He was second to last in completion percentage. I could just go on and on. He wound up with 16 touchdowns to 15 interceptions. It was a bad year. Yes. But if you closely listen to what Jeffrey Lurie said yesterday, first he, he tried to say, that, that Doug Peterson didn't deserve to go. Well, didn't deserve to go. Well, then why are you, you let him go to you? What are you talking about? And then he, he also tried to make the point this wasn't about Carson Wentz. And then he went on and on to make the point this was nothing but about Carson right. Wentz. He believes the next coach will be able to get the best out that, of it. That is correct. And he has no <laughs> choice because he gave Carson Wentz his money. Right. And if you cut Carson Wentz, which would be the worst case scenario right now, 
you would owe more than $59 million in dead cap money. And, and, and you ben, wouldn't, you, it wouldn't result in any savings until 2022 if you cut him right now. And they're not going to cut him. Skip, right? and they are, hold on. They already got two, a quarter of a billion committed in contracts when the cap is supposed to be somewhere between 195 and 175. Yep. So you already, without Carson Wentz, you already 70, 80 million dollars over potential mm -hmm. over the potential cap. Okay. So I'm on record. I've never wavered on this. I don't believe in Carson Wentz as a long-term answer at as your starting quarterback. Okay. Because he's not accurate enough and he's not poised enough under fire. Happy feet, crazy feet. He he plays hard. I think his heart's in the right place. He will literally run through a brick wall to get a first down. Uh, I, I think he mended a lot of fences in the locker room the, the last couple of years that where he was a little bit distant and aloof from yep. a lot of players. You remember how we looked at Tannehill? Mm -hmm. He goes to Arthur Smith. Arthur Smith gets him. They can run the football a little bit, and we look at Ryan Tannehill a lot different yep. than we did when he was in Miami. Well, maybe a new set of that. eyes. Right. Maybe a new set of eyes. Maybe a new coaching mm -hmm. staff can come in here and believe in it because I think Dougie P stopped believing in Carson. But the question that I have for you, have you seen enough from Jalen Hurts to say he's the guy moving forward? I just believe in Jalen Hurts' football character, his natural born leadership. He is not the, the thrower of the football that Carson Wentz is. He's not as big and strong as Carson Wentz is as, as, a, as a bigger athlete. Mm -hmm. But Jalen is weight room strong, he runs strong, the, the team gravitates to him. The, the team will, will feed off him. And I believe he got thrown into a fire that was just as bad off as, remember, yes. as, as what Carson Wentz right. was having to deal with. And he got a lot more out of that team, I thought, than Carson Wentz was he getting out He got one win. Okay? He got one win, Skip. But he, he had them against the Washington football team in position to be 17-all, and they went for it on fourth and, what was it, four? Yeah. Well, well uh, Walker Tuam had them in position to win the game, and then mm -hmm. Dougie P wanted to settle for a field goal, just run the ball into the line and kick a field goal. Mm -hmm. I believe in Jalen Hurts, but I told you that before the draft, and I believe he'll prove to be a more successful performing starting quarterback than Carson Wentz. But I don't know now, if you bring in a new coach, right. what will that mean for Jalen? I have no idea. Well, I think, I think it means that he's probably going to be the backup. I don't think, I don't see it as a quarterback competition. They're going to give Wentz all the reps. They want to make sure. They're going to do, Skip, they, when you invest that kind of money, Skip, you're going to see this thing through. You're going to give it every opportunity to succeed. It's just like with anything. You invest in a stock, Skip, it starts to go to dip a little bit. You're not going to get up off it. Mm -mm. You're going to give it every you chance to <laughs> you're going to give it every chance to rebound and try to see this thing through. And so I believe that's what they're going to do with Carson Wentz. Um, like I said, I haven't seen enough. And I'm not saying Jalen Hurts can't be a, a solid quarterback in this league, but I haven't seen enough in the four games that I saw him start because what I saw, the guy that turns the ball over at the same rate, he gets sacked at the same rate. For a guy that's more mobile, he gets sacked at the same rate. He turns the ball over at maybe a slightly higher rate when you factor in fumbles and interceptions, and he didn't win any more games. And okay, the completion remember, percentage is worse. He was a rookie quarterback who got thrown into a fire against the New Orleans Saints, and he beat them yes. at home. Yes. And then I thought he played very well at Dallas, but he got outplayed by Andy Dalton. He threw two picks, though. Okay, he did, but but he also had, four, what was the combined yardage, 411 combined yards. We'll do that. Empty Ooh. count don't, don't mean nothing. Ooh. He would have won that game against Washington if he had just if Peterson had stuck. Oh, I believe that. I, did, did you, you get no argument from me. I believe that. Yep. Doug Peterson wrote a book called Fearless after he won the Super Bowl, <laughs> and he didn't win it with Carson Wentz. He went on a magical Super Bowl roll with Nick Foles at quarterback. Yeah. Nick Foles won Super Bowl MVP and played back-to-back -back NFC Championship game Super Bowl, two of the, the greatest quarterback games you'll ever see in the history of the playoffs. I agree. Boom, boom. And that was that. And it put Dougie P on the map, and it allowed him to write a book called I Am Fearless. I don't know about all that. And, <laughs> and all of a sudden, it went to his head. And I believe he didn't want to hear anything from Howie Roseman, the GM. He didn't want to hear anything more from Jeffrey Lurie, the owner. I got this. And I do believe he, he has a like a soft spot for Nate Sudfeld. He believes he can play in this league because, as you said, he sees Nate Sudfeld as him. That's what he was. <laughs> he was that quarterback. Skip, for me. 
and what's what I've learned about coaches, they would rather lose their way than win someone else's way. Because Jeffrey Lure was like imploring him. It's, and he's like, look, you just need a new a set of eyes. He was upset. I read the reports that said he was upset that he made him get rid of Al, I think Al Grow, an mm-hmm. uh, yep. uh, offensive assistant mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. See, Lurie's saying, you got to go get the hottest young offensive coordinator out there. Right. And, first... and he's saying, no, I, I do this. I got this. No, but no. That, 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 no, no. But I've been eating your cooking for the last three, four years, and it okay. don't taste the same. Yep. So I need a new. Sh- I, I, look, I'm going to let you still be the head chef. But I need a new sushi. Yeah, he did. That's what he That's said. That's basically what he said, Skip. So, and, and, and why would you, if, if you, why would you give resistance, Skip? You realize there's only 32 restaurants. And we're in the middle of a pandemic. It's a, they're not opening any new restaurants, Skip, right now. You do realize, Dougie P, this is one of 32 jobs. Mm-hmm. Now, it's not the greatest job, but it is a, it's one of 32. So, which means it's pretty, it's pretty outstanding. Mm-hmm. And for the owner to make a recommendation... At least it will not give us some thought. Yeah. Okay, sure. Mm. Well, Pro Football Focus says of the six openings right now, ranked last in appeal would be this Philadelphia. Oh, I, yeah, you, and I totally agree. You see you, the, off, you the got, offensive line is in shambles, yeah, the steel position. Your, your cap. cap is in shambles. Yeah. And you, you at least have a quarterback quandary. Right. You're, you're not sure which way you're going right. to go. Okay? Right. Okay, so good luck to whoever walks into that door. I mean, somebody going to want that job still because, like I said, it's one of 32. Well, that's true. But it's... I, I was looking at the Chargers. I'm looking at Jacksonville. I'm definitely looking at Houston. Oh, I, no, let me see. I want to see what Deshaun does before yeah. I look at Houston. No, I agree. <laughs> if Deshaun's but, but, not there. But Deshaun is Deshaun. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. If Deshaun's not in Houston, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah Houston, Houston for failure. Yeah. You had that job for about two years. No mercy. Alabama rolled to another national championship with a 52-24 victory over Ohio State last night. Heisman Trophy winner Devontae Smith took home the offensive MVP after finishing with 12 catches for 215 yards and three touchdowns. And that was all, guys, in the first half. Smith is a lock to be a first-round selection in the draft, and he looks to become the latest Bama receiver to take the NFL by storm, joining Rucks, Jerry Judy, Kelvin Ridley, and Amari Cooper. The list goes on. Shannon, how good can he be in the NFL? He can be very good, but you forgot about the best one, Julio. Oh, yeah, Julio. <laughs> Skip, I believe he can be great. I believe he'll be the first receiver off the board. And like I said, when we talk about who he reminds me of, his build, his stature, the way he gets in and out of breaks reminds you of Marvin Harrison. I was texting with my brother last night, and he said, yeah, his build is like Marvin. He, he has a lot of similarities. But, Shannon, you know who he reminds me of? I said, who? He said, Jerry. He said, because Jerry would run, and you didn't realize how fast Jerry was, but Jerry was separating. And when you look at this kid's kid, you're like, he's not even running. But you look at the distance that he's creating. You're like, How? It's like it's so effortless. It's like he looks like running on clouds. Mm -hmm. And the thing that we know about Alabama receivers, all of them can run routes. All of them get in and out breaks. All of them can run the route tree. So you can run the speed out. You can run the dig. You can run, you know, whatever you want to run. That's coaching. Yes, yes. Uh, I had Ozzy Newsom on my show, and he said what they do at Alabama is say each one teach one. Say, if you're there, the guys coming in behind you, yeah. it's your job I to agree. prepare them and yep. get them ready. Mm-hmm. So you look at the defensive line, mm-hmm. it's not a surprise. Yep. They keep back the defensive line. You look at the offensive line. You look at what they do. They're just one after the other. Skip, I mean, over 15 yards a catch, 23 touchdowns. There's no question in my mind he's the greatest Alabama player ever. You look at what he accomplished, two national champions, caught the game winner as a true freshman. He wins the Heisman Trophy, the Blitner Cup Award, the Maxwell Award, AP Player of the Year. SEC player of the year, Skip, his accomplishments and the Heisman. So here, when I look at him, Skip, it's hard for me to see where he, he's not going to be successful. And I know people say, but Shannon, he's so small. He's six foot. He's 170 pounds soaking wet. He plays stronger than his stature would say he should. Yep. It's hard to press. He can get out of he can get out, he can, he can accelerate, he can get separate. Skip, I like this kid. I, I, I think this kid can be really, really special. A lot of it has to do with where he goes in the quarterback that he's going to be with, especially as a rookie. Mm-hmm. If you look at Jordan Je- uh, 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 I think Justin, Just- Justin Jefferson, yeah. he went with Kirk Cousins. And you might think, well, Kirk, not- he's perfect for this kid. This kid had 1,400 yards with something we hadn't seen in a very long time. That's more yards. I think Anquan had the record for in the Super Bowl era with over 1,300. Mm-hmm. This kid did 1,400. So you can make a case right now, Justin Jefferson is a top 10 receiver. 
I believe Devontae Smith has that exact same ability, the ability to run, the ability to separate, and then yards after the catch. So, speaking of your big brother, Sterling Sharp, who was a pretty good receiver in and of his own right and would be in the Hall of Fame if not for an injury that cut short his career, mm -hmm. and it was a serious, what would you say, neck? Is like it was a neck injury, yes. Yeah. Yes, he had, he had abnormal lackness between C1 and C2. Up high. Up high, line. which yeah. was the vertebrae that Christopher Reeve broke when he fell off the horse. Ooh. So he had abnormal lackness, so it would move and then he would be temporarily paralyzed, and then it would have to work itself back in. So they took a bone out of his hip, they fused it, but the doctor said, so, if you were my son, Can't risk. you wouldn't play anymore. Okay, well, he did not. He did not. God bless him. Speaking of Sterling Sharp, I tweeted at halftime, I believe it was, because it was just before the start of the third quarter when Devontae unfortunately got hurt. Right. But I tweeted that if he can stay healthy on tangibles and intangibles, he can be Jerry Rice. Mm -hmm. That's who I see. That's who I've seen from the start. I know that is the ultimate mouthful. <laughs> but to your point, this is the greatest college receiver I have ever seen. Mm -hmm. And I saw Julio, and we can go all back to right. all, they all came up through the ranks, mm -hmm. but even Julio as a Falcon is, is much bigger and oh, probably man. faster. Probably, yeah. You know, what, what do you think Devontae will time if he does run the 40? Will he run 4-4? Four, four, four? I'm saying 4-5, really? maybe 4-5-2. I'm going to go 4-4. Four, four. You will 4-4? Four, four? But I'm not going to go 4-2. No, 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 no. I'm not, you know, you know, I, don't, I don't see him okay. that fast. Why did Tom Landry once upon a time say no to Jerry Rice? Because they passed him. Mm -hmm. uh, he just he just didn't run fast enough for us. We, we need <laughs> speed. We need speed. Well, guess what? Separation. Good. Right. I can't explain it, but... This Some guys can just play fast, Skip. They won't time fast, fast, but they play fast. He accelerates so quickly and so smoothly and effortlessly that it's hard for DBs to focus in on what's about to hit them. Right. There, there's a way that, that you know where you're going to go before he knows. Correct. And you separate from him in ways that, that, you, that are inexplicable. As Ryan Day, the Ohio State coach, said after the game, he just eats ground. He just eats it up. <laughs> and it just, it, he does it so, so, so effortlessly, effortlessly that you just say, how did he get there? Right. How did he get to that spot so quickly? Well, he has quickness and he has speed and he has high football IQ. He knows where he wants to go and he's going to get there before you get there. It's called eating up the cushion, Skip. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, you're like, okay, the DB is playing off. And before you know it, he's up on you. Okay, now I got to get out of my back pedal. He snaps it off, run the speed out. Or now he runs the over, or he runs the post, he runs the dig. Because everything looks the same, Skip. There's no way, if you watch him, there's no wasted body motion in him. Everything is straight ahead, fall off the table, tearing him back. He, and Tom, let's get Tom Landry had gotten spoiled by having bullet Bob Hayes. Bob Hayes was just the fastest man in the world. So when you he, have he had Olympics, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when you have him, everybody's gonna be slow compared to, to compared to him. It's right. like Andy. It's like, well, I don't want that receiver because uh, he can't celebrate. Well, you got Tyreek and Miko Hartman, which are two of the fast, 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 fastest receivers in the NFL. So everybody gonna look slow compared to them, right? And like Jerry, the, the, the problem I always say with Jerry, it was hard to, to Jerry Rice, it was hard to, to, to sensationalize what he did because he, he made everything look so easy. Everything Where's was routine. the signature catch? Does he dive? Does he one hand it? No, nope. He I don't know if to. I can skip. I don't know. And like I said, I'm old enough to remember I was in the league when Jerry was yep. in his prime. I don't know if I've ever seen Jerry dive to make a catch. Everything he just caught everything. He just caught it, and he caught it in stride, yeah, right. like like he, you're supposed to. He didn't have no Odell or I still say CC had the best hands I've ever seen. That was Chris before, Carter. Yeah, Chris Carter. Mm -hmm. Now they got the tactified glove. I don't know yeah. if it's their hands. I don't know if they're attacking this on glove. The technology. But Skip Jerry didn't have Jerry played in Newmans, mm -hmm. and everybody anybody know about the Newman glove. They're not like what they have now. Mm. But Jerry just made everything look so easy. You like what? What? Well, damn, how good is Jerry? He ain't making no circus catch like I see the other guys. But you just look up every year. He's all pro. He's in the Pro Bowl. He's got 1,400 yards. he got 15 touchdowns. You're like, what well, the damn. And he worked so hard he in the offseason. He ran hills. He was ready to play. He was at peak physical performance, fitness performance every year he played. And it's Jerry's fault. 
in the West Coast that every receiver got catch the ball got to finish 40 yards because every pass he yeah, caught, he practice. finished 40 yards. Yeah. So now that's required. I don't know if they still do it, but we had to do it in the West I Coast. I, I got it. I'm like, dude, I just caught a two-yard run. You talking about finish? Because Mike was always staying 40 yards. So you had to run to him and then come back. So that was Jerry's fault. And Devontae's hands are effortlessly great yes. because – the first time I ever saw him bobble a ball in the years I've been watching him was the second play of the second half last night. Right. And what happened? If we have that play, can we see it real quick? Yes. He, he bobbled it slightly. He couldn't quite pull it in. It's a, it's a good pass. And as he bobbled, all of a sudden, Pete Warner, the linebacker, drew a bead on him and just hit him flush, head-on collision, and he got his right hand caught mm -hmm. in the Right. In the middle. Like his fingers got jammed, Skip, yep. because, you know, when you, you relax, Skip, you're not thinking nobody's going to be there, and then boom. Okay. So his right hand yep. took the brunt of it. It's over on the side, and it dislocated, I believe, the index finger of his right hand, and they said they couldn't get it, it to pop right. back in. Hence, he couldn't come back into the game. Right, because I, I, I think, because I'm saying, I, for a second, I thought he had broken the skin, Skip, because I dislocated, I dislocated my finger. Yep. Um, my ring finger, yep. and what we, they do is just tape it together. They, get, they were able to get it back in. It went to the side. Yep. Uh, Bill Tessendorf, who was the trainer in uh, Baltimore, they got it back in place, Skip, and they just taped the fingers together. And I was like, okay, they're just going to tape the fingers together. Mm -hmm. So that lets me... I think it was his ring finger, now that I think about it. I think really? it was. I'm not sure, but, but whatever. One of the... But they it, couldn't get it back in, They huh? couldn't get it back in, so he couldn't come back in, which was probably a good thing. Right. All things considered, he had done enough. No, nah, I wanted to see him get three Did bills. You? Yeah, I wanted to see him get three bills. Three bills? He might have gotten four bills. <laughs> and they, they might have scored 100 points. It looked like they were trending towards 70. Yeah. Had he, had he not gotten hurt. And then hurt. you'd been up in your palatial estate just yeah, doing this all night. Know, you know right? what, I wasn't, I wasn't gloating. I, I felt really comfortable. As the game progressed, I was like, Ohio State, y'all had to do it defense. You got to stop him at some point, Skip. Mm -hmm. Nope. <laughs> uh, Not this young man. Unfortunately, Ooh. losing Sermon early, though. That was just a tough blow for the Buckeyes. No mercy. 11 games into the NBA season, and the Lakers find themselves with the league's best record at 8-3. So it should come as no surprise that the LeBron for MVP buzz is picking up projection already. The 36-year-old king is averaging 24-8-7 in his 18th season, and according to Fox Bet Sportsbook, his odds are only trailing preseason favorite Luka Doncic and back-to-back -back winner Giannis Antetokounmpo to take home the hardware. So, Shannon, is LeBron the early MVP so far? I would say yes, Skip, because he happens to be the best player on the best team. And all those numbers are not where we customarily see him. But points, he's off just slightly. Um, you know, he's averaged 25 points a game for 16 straight seasons. Nobody's ever done that. But he's a 27-7 guy. So he's slightly off that, Skip, but he's playing the fewest minutes he's ever played in his career. He's playing slightly, a little over 32 minutes a game. Um, and so for him not to have missed a game, and he's really carrying the low. AD hasn't been up to himself yet. We're not seeing the AD. We saw a little bit of it the other night. Well, he went 20s, I think, 27 and 12, something like that. But right now he's 23 and 9. But, uh, I'm surprised that LeBron is is playing as much as he is, and he's played. I think he's playing well, Skip. He's he's trying to get everybody else involved. I mean, he's coming out and he's staying out for longer periods of time. Uh, on average, he's playing about 15, 16 minutes in the first half, following that up with another 16, sometimes 17, 18 minutes in the second half. But uh, averaging 32 and a half minutes a game and putting up the numbers that he is, they have the best record. So uh, yeah, right now I would say so. But it's a long ways to go. LeBron normally doesn't get serious about the MVP conversation until after the All-Star game. Even though they're not going to have it, Skip, they're still going to have the selection. So we're still a ways away. We're probably about another month before LeBron says, okay, hey, man, I got a chance to get this thing. Cause remember last mm. year, Skip, it was like that weekend where he had the Bucks, he had the Clippers that we saw him take off. And like, okay, let me go ahead and make a push for this thing because I think it's a realistic chance now. So I think that that's... That's what he'll do again. But Paul George has had a great had a great year thus far. Steph, uh, Yoke has been unbelievable. 24, 11, and 10. They, uh, they're 5 and 5. And Joel Embiid, they've lost their last three. He's 27, 12. But I would say right now, if like, you, like you'd like to tell me, if the voting was today, I believe LeBron would win it. But the voting isn't today. It's a long ways away. But he's playing well right now. So I do agree with this part of your conclusion. If the voting were today, I believe he would win it. And I would say that the voting was a joke. 
I also, for the record, told you last year, after that weekend in question that you just brought up, Milwaukee and the Clippers, and who else was it? Yeah. But, but it was those two, yes. for sure. Mm-hmm. I said LeBron just won the MVP mm-hmm. because I believe he deserved the MVP just ahead of the pandemic. Then the rest of it, I didn't really care. It was when they went to the bubble. Well, they had stopped the voting. They said once the season okay. stopped, so the okay, bu- I got bubble it. didn't count. He deserved the MVP over Giannis last year. Here's my problem with LeBron, and I know it's early, but that's what we're doing right now if the voting were today. My problem with early LeBron so far, he has been a disaster in the fourth quarters. In the money quarter, the numbers are horrendously bad by his standards. Year 18, whatever. He's LeBron James. You say he's the GOAT. He's obviously one of the top three or four players in the league right now. But look at these numbers in the fourth quarter so far. He's shooting 36.7%. Remember, he's a career 50% from the field shooter. Right. 50%. He's going to make half the shots that he takes. In fourth quarter so far, he ranks 200th at 36.7%. From three so far, in the, just in the fourth quarter, he ranks 156 because he's making 23.8%. Well, that's, that's by his, it's, it's, it's horrible. And then from the free throw line, he ranks 172nd so far in the fourth quarters at 65.2%. Let's look at just the last three fourth quarters that he's played. He is 2 of 15 combined in those three fourth quarters. 2 of 15, he is 0 for 6 from 3 and 5 of 10 from the free throw line. That's a combined minus 14 in the the three fourth quarters of the last three games that he's played. Mm -hmm. The one that caught my eye, and I watch every game that he plays, even though this year we, we get distracted because we have to watch NFL and NBA <laughs> yeah. up against each other. Right. I've never seen anything like this before, right. but I've usually got one NBA game on while the NFL game is on. Right. So Friday night, I forced Ernestine. I said, no, we can't watch whatever we we're going to watch, whatever the movie was. I've got to watch the LeBron game. Okay, so she sat with me, and so here we go. It's Chicago. It's a team they should handle at home, although it's hard to sort of get up for Chicago. Oh, really? Like the, ask the Clippers how even it should okay. have been. I got it, but it, <laughs> it took all of Kawhi and all of Paul George, yes. and, and they held them off at the end. Okay? So in this case, I'm not sure that LeBron and company held them off. They just got lucky at the end. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Skip, they did this without AD. AD didn't play. AD did not play, so it was all LeBron right. all the time in the fourth quarter. Right. So down the stretch of the fourth quarter. How was he down the stretch? Okay, 142 left, he missed a three. Then he drove and missed again about 30 seconds later. Then he drove and muscled in a layup, and it should have been a three one. point. And it should have been and no, he, that he, and nothing. Say and say it with me, and one. And nothing. <laughs> he missed the free throw, which would have put them up four at the time. Then Garrett Temple comes down for the Bulls and drains a three, unlikely. But here we go back down, and with 20 seconds left, I'm saying, LeBron, just drive it. They can't keep you from the rim. If you have to go shoot the free throws, you can make these free throws to put you up three. And what did he do if we could see, please, what he did? He shot a 30-footer. He (laughs) shot a 31-footer. It's not quite logo, but it's pretty close, and it didn't even. Yeah, that that, that would not. I like. What are you doing? And this is Zach Levine at the end. He got an 18-footer. That's to win the game because LeBron took a logo three. So here we go again, logo three, almost logo, 31 feet. Uh, didn't really come close. And all of a sudden, the Bulls come right back down, and Zach Levine, who had had a pretty hot hand through the game, gets this shot to win it and missed it. Yeah. Okay, so LeBron has he, – he, I, I got to be honest. He has stunk in the fourth quarters, and everybody's saying he deserves the MVP. I don't get it. What about – Last year, yes. This what year, about, What about the other quarters? Okay, well, obviously, the numbers that he's putting up are still pretty good. They're still pretty good, 24, 8, and 8, really. Yeah. 24, 8, and 8. eight. Okay. If he rolls out of bed in 24, 8, and 8, and this is year 18. I give you that. He's probably going to have the greatest 18th year, 18th season that you could ever have. 19th, 20th, okay, 21st. We'll, okay, we'll see about that. You, you, you better you take them one at a time We take one at a time. We know what'll happen. Okay, but you, you cannot make a case for how he's playing in these fourth quarters. But who, but, 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 I'm but you, sorry. But, okay, of the guy that's on the board, with throwing Paul George, throwing Jokic, throwing Embiid, 
who would you vote MVP right now? At this moment? Yes. I, I told you last week, I think Paul George has played at the highest level of anybody so far. I just believe it. No, I, you, 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 can't, you, can't, you can't be the high level if you, you get beat by 51 and then okay. you go a 22-point lead. Then okay, you, you, but, but he, told, he, he said we took Christmas Day, the day okay, after what, Christmas Okay, what about Day? that 22-point lead, though? Okay. I get that 51, but what about the 22-point lead? Th that was Steph finally turning back into Steph, and he has been lousy in a lot of fourth quarters, and that was the one that he took off in. They could not guard him in the fourth quarter. What do you mean? After they had just dominated that team as they should have. That was on the same night yeah. that this happened. Uh, hold on. But you told me, now I keep, everybody keep telling me that Paul George and Kawhi Leonard mm -hmm. are the two best wing defenders. Yeah, I saw you tweeted that. Yeah. Right? And what about Pat Bell? Mm -hmm. Oh, Pat Bell, that boy it off. You wait, hey, show that. You mean what he did to LeBron? Flew out of his hands. Mm. There go little old Steph. Little old, y'all let little Steph do that? Well, Steph is two inches taller than Pat Bev. Okay, how, uh, it's hey, all listen, that was the Steph who made 105 straight three pointers yeah. in practice. That right? you didn't believe. You I, still believe exactly. I still See? don't believe it. I still don't believe it because he's still shooting lousy from three by his standards. But in this game against the Clippers, yeah. that was just crazy but, hot but, Steph. But guess what? You was talking crazy about Chicago almost beating the Lakers. Yep. Oh, Zach, Zach Levine. Yeah. <laughs> he got 38 against the Lakers. He went and got 45 or 10 Wait. threes against the Clippers. You know what? He's really good. <laughs> yeah. No, he is on a bad team. Yeah. But he is really good. He is a handful. And when he get it going like this, Kevin, what you going to do? Okay, well, that's what I said about Steph. I just kept waiting for somebody to stop him, and they just you, couldn't you could, stop no, him. Nah. You can't, when he does that, remember, that was at right. in their new arena right. up in San Francisco. That's, that's, so. You just run by the coach, coach yeah. hey, what you want to do? What's the next set? <sighs> Just like Devontae, Skip, last night when the guy get it going like that, Coach, I can't do nothing with Hey, Y'all better roll some coverage or something. I don't right? know. But it's a long season. Maybe LeBron can bounce back in fourth quarters. But so far, so bad. Well, we got, what you call them? We got, uh, uh, who we got tonight? Oh, we got the Rockets tonight. You got to do back, it back again. Tonight. Yeah. Back to back, back, to back. back. with the Rockets. Got the Rockets. Okay. It's hard to win back to back on the road. Hey, oh, right? they, oh, hold on, we just did it to the Spurs. Yep. No and look at the Spurs. Just Without like, LaMarcus Aldridge. And LaMarcus Aldridge had had another game like that since. Gary Trent Jr. has not had another game close. How do he you had know? had two games close to when he played against the Lakers. You don't follow this. Yes, I do. I follow the Spurs. <laughs> I follow everybody because I want to see are you know, they going to play like they played against the Lakers? And LaMarcus Aldridge, why don't you? I nah. thought you don't eat broccoli. I don't. I eat broccoli. Yeah, I eat Twice a day, every day. And Gary Trent Jr. When last Twice time he had a, a, had a game, two day? games, three games like that. I there should you be doing that. that. I think Skip actually has the answer. No mercy. Saturday on Fox, the Rams take on the Packers. Coverage begins at 2.30 Eastern. Then on Sunday, Tom Brady and the Bucks wear off with Drew Brees and the Saints at 6 Eastern. The NFL Divisional Playoffs presented by Tur TurboTax live on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Well, the Cowboys have hired former Falcons head coach Dan Quinn as their new defensive coordinator, replacing Mike Nolan, who was fired last week. Before his time in Atlanta, Quinn oversaw the Legion of Boom as defensive coordinator in Seattle, which finished first in yards allowed and points allowed in back-to-back -back Super Bowl trips. Now, Quinn will look to fix one of the league's worst units as the Cowboys allowed the most points in franchise history and finished with the uh, 31st ranked run defense in the NFL. We're now joined by former Cowboy Orlando Skendrick. Orlando, give this hire a letter grade for us, please. Um, I'm going to give it a C plus, maybe a B minus. Um, me, me and Sharp talked about this before. When you get to hiring and giving people jobs for, based off of what they did in the past, I mean, that's a that's you get into like deep waters. But my biggest thing with Dan Quinn is he's fired several defensive coordinators. He was a defensive minded coach when he went to Atlanta. And, you know, he's most remembered for his meltdowns. Um, another thing with Dallas, they need to add some pieces. They don't have many secondary pieces. They need some interior defense alignment and they can add another linebacker. And, you know, I just don't know how much of that he can fix. Um, he likes to play cover three. And years ago, when they brought cover three into the league with that match three with Seattle, you know, they, they kind of took the lead by surprise with Earl Thomas, Cam Chancellor, Rich Sherman, Brandon Browner, and they just don't have those pieces in Dallas. Mm. <laughs> I gave it a C also because I don't know what people realize. On the team, the, the guy they just fired a couple of years ago, Chris Richard was the defensive back coach. He ran the same system. Actually, this is Gus Bradley's system. It is. And what I they, agree. They Thank played. you for saying that because <laughs> well, he originated. He, right. It. Yes. Well, what, no, if you want to go back further, it's not Gus Bradley's system. But Gus, Gus brought it with cover one. Yeah. 
Gus yeah. played the cover one, what we used to call them, a little older. We called it cover one lurk. They call it cover one robber. And they, and as you mentioned, you had Sherm, you had uh, uh, Cam, you had Earl Thomas. I just want to know who in Dallas is Bobby Wagner? Which one, which one of the middle guys is Bobby Wagner? Uh, mm. Oh. Jalen Smith is. Uh, is she, <laughs> he, got, he might got the same number, but that's where it stops. And that's the thing that you have to understand. Because I will, you see, and if they play well, that means they underperform under Chris Richard. And if they don't, I, I just like, and like uh, O was saying, Dan Quinn skipped. He had a 28 point, he had a 25 point lead in the Super Bowl. And you look at this, he had a 19 point lead against the Cowboys. He had uh, a 17 point lead against uh, the Bears. He had a big lead, he had a lead against the Lions. Uh, what? At some point in time, now, as O said, he's a defensive minded coach, and his defenses keep giving up big leads. Uh, it, the same thing that you you guys said about Mike Nolan. Last time Mike Nolan was a defensive coordinator, oh. he, it, his team did bad. He got a job. And by the way, that was also in Atlanta. Dan Quinn got, Dan Quinn got a job based off of what? That was many, many years that he best. was the coach in, uh, in uh, Seattle. And those guys were in their prime. That's a prime Sherm. That's a prime Earl Thomas. That's a prime Cam Chancellor and Bobby Wagner and K.J. Wright. We ain't got none of that there. We can take this step further. They had also had Chris Clemens, who was, you know, he was great at what they asked him to do. They had Brandon Meebane and yeah, Red yeah. Bryant playing that strong side defensive end. You yeah. have to have big defense alignment. If you want to play a one gap defense, sharp skip, you know this, you covered it. You want to play a one gap defense, everybody got to do their job. You got to have hell raisers. Have, yeah. <laughs> so, Orlando, before we move on, who originated this defense? You didn't finish your point before it's Gus Money Kiffin. It's an evolution of Monty Kiffin. Monty Kiffin okay. brought the cover two into the league. No, yeah. no, 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 no. No one could figure it out. I, I, I don't, but, but that's to, more you, Tampa. You, you, you talking about Tampa too? Yeah. Well, but Monty, Monty gave Gus Bradley his first yeah. job. Monty was the one who recommended Gus Bradley get the job for Pete for Pete Carroll, and then he took he took from playing cover two, and then he started to use that two shell safety yeah. and drop him down right. and play cover three. And then they got these big long defensive backs from Seattle that can play these cover three zones because they can close these windows. They don't have those guys in Dallas. And you well, you can play that coverage when you got Warren Sapp, Derrick Brooks, Simeon Wright. Yeah, you can play a lot. You can play whatever you and want. Actually, and actually, everybody knows that Pete Carroll's a defensive mind. When Pete Carroll right. was in with the Jets, he played a little bit of this one lurk, yeah. a little bit of this cover three. Yep. Okay. I'm going to give this move as a lifelong Cowboy <laughs> fan a C plus. I'm going all the way up to plus. But you gave and, it a C and, though. And why do I go C plus? The only Silver lining here is that McCarthy brought in two of his ex-assistants from who were with him on the defensive side in Green Bay, George Witt Jr. and Jason Simmons. I, I don't know much about either, either but though. they were two of the primary candidates. He wanted to go old. I right. want to go back to what I knew right, in right. Green Bay. They so were I'm, terrible I'm, on I'm still not sure about Mike McCarthy, what he was doing. I, you're starting to convince me. I think he was a product <laughs> of Aaron Rodgers and Brett Favre before that. So my point is... At least he didn't get to go back in time to what he knew in Green Bay. At, at least with Dan Quinn, he, he has no relationship right. with Mike McCarthy Correct. at all. So at right. least that's a clean slate. Right. Mm -hmm. And at least Dan Quinn will come in as the unquestioned head coach of the defense because right. he's been the head coach of the defense in Atlanta right. for what that's worth. And that's not worth very much. <laughs> From what I know of Dan Quinn, he's a good guy. He's high energy. He's sort of a Pete Carroll clone a yeah. little bit, you know, and he loves his specialty is the defensive line. Right. So they will go back to conventional four 43. down linemen. Yep. And and DeMarcus won't have to be standing up saying, what do I do now? What right. do I? He will put his hand in the dirt and he will go like right. he used to go. Right. So will that be an upgrade? Maybe if they go back to you single no high, just sort of go ahead, Orlando. Yeah. You can't go anywhere but up. But yeah, like from what I know about Dan Quinn, and I hate to cut you off, Skip, but yeah. I just want to give you a little bit of my insight. What I know about Dan Quinn, he's a great, high-energy, positive guy, but I yep. mean, be positive if you want. If you don't have the you don't, Jimmy's and the Joes, I don't care nothing about your X's and O's. Okay, so I tweeted immediately when I heard this yesterday. Can he bring 2014 Richard Sherman with him? Can he bring Bobby Wagner from 2014? <laughs> can he go back in a time machine? Can he get Cliff Averill? Can, can he get Bruce Irvin? Can, no. can he get... Uh, Michael Bennett, Bennett can, no. can he get any of them? Can he get Cam? Can he get Earl? No, 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 no. no. We don't have anywhere anywhere near any of those no. guys, right? So where does this go? It, it, 
is it, it, it's got to be better than Mike Nolan, who right. I wanted fired at midseason. Right. It was a disaster. It was all-time embarrassment. It was arguably the worst defense in the history of the franchise, a franchise that once upon a time had a defense called Doomsday long before Orlando played for the Dallas Cowboys. Even Orlando's defenses were there, – there was one year I made a case that Orlando Skandrick was the MVP of the defense. That's how good it was that he was dominating. Well, and now this. You know what I look at, oh? If, they, if they're smart, they would draft another corner to go alongside Diggs. Well, and again, because at that, 10, you got Patrick Sertan we saw last yeah. night. He's pretty good. I, I don't know. I don't know if any safeties are, not, uh, are ready that high, but no. you definitely need to play that defense. You got to have guys that can lock. And if you don't, yeah, the the way that defense was built is they built it from the front to the back. So if you look at Sherm, they went and got big long corners with balls. Yes. They, they, their big thing was making you take the long hard way. Right. And yeah. Defense alignment. They were able to draft, draft defense alignment, and Dallas just hasn't. I mean, they drafted Randy Gregory, and he's finally coming along, but they don't have any interior defense alignment. They drafted Jalen Smith really high, and he's been up and down. Um, I'm going to keep, they don't have any safeties. They've shown the inability to draft the safeties, and let's go back to the 2020 draft. It it was no purpose of drafting CeeDee Lamb except for trying to be cute. I, that's I, that's what, and that's what I told Skip. I no, it's because he's by far the best player on the board. But Skip, I got no problem Skip, with that. You didn't need offense. You got to be able to stop somebody. Okay, but when when yeah. he falls in your lap at seventeen, you had him in the top five on your board. I'm taking C D Lamb. Well, Skip, you got enough kids. You don't want okay. any more babies. Okay, you should have got when got your defensive <laughs> player, and then you'd have been Skip. You this got, is a very special baby. <laughs> okay, it is. But, 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 okay. I'm not gonna get a. I'm, I can't get a baby when I got another. Teenage son, and I just gave him $100 million and Amari Cooper. Okay, I, I look, I got it. And by the way, Neville Gallimore in the interior, he's going to be a player for the University of Oklahoma. That That's when you didn't. But but this is my refer- problem, though, Skip. He's yeah. a 3-4 player. Yeah. You're talking about I need okay. a one-gap right. guy that can get up and wreak havoc. Right. You, 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 need Aaron, you need Aaron. You see, when the defense to be effective. Okay, Skip, we'll just snap our fingers and get Aaron Dollar. Okay? <laughs> well, that's, well, that's what you we'll need just to play go by. Maybe Jerry can just go buy him from the Rams in the hey. offseason. Oh, when you tell him, but if you go play that style of defense, you need an Aaron Donald. You need a Sap. Okay. You need a guy that, that's going to play that under tackle and can go wreak havoc in the backfield. Okay, we don't have it. But guess what, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? An even worse story in the NFC least is the Philadelphia Eagles. So, Orlando Scandrick, what did you think of the firing of Doug Peterson and what does it mean for Carson Wentz? Um, I think they're trying to do everything to save Carson. And save him and get him back mentally. I think they're trying to put all the blame on Doug. Let's go back to Howie. I told you, I told y'all about Howie, man. You did. Howie survived the Andy Reid firing. Chip move him over to the other side. You know, Chip have a little success. As soon as Chip struggled a little bit, he right there, he right there in Larry ear. I told you, I told you, I told you. <laughs> he weasels his way back over to the head coach. <laughs> he wins. And then they start to struggle and he does this big press conference about how they're all disappointed and everybody has a part in this. And you know, he's disappointed. And then Dougie P fired. I think Doug is just, you know, I mean, Doug seems like a smart guy. And he's he knows Howie for what he's worth. He's been there with him for a long, long yeah, time. You're talking about Howie Roseman, the GM. Yeah, right, right. Go ahead. Yep. Yeah. I Go mean, on. I don't, how does this guy keep surviving? He, he look at the players good, that good he's question. Brought, Like, who has he brought in or who has he drafted that's really – yeah, he, he, he's he on passed, his third head coach. Right, right, he passed on Justin Jefferson he to did. take Jalen Reger. Yep. Okay. I, I got it. Yeah, I just, I mean, I felt I felt for Doug. I thought Doug was a good leader, man. I thought Doug was a, you never heard me say anything not positive about him. I thought he was a great coach. I thought he was very positive and upbeat. And, I mean, I know he'll land on his feet, but the Eagles, I don't, what direction do they go in? I've seen some reports that they might go after Lincoln Riley. I mean, that they're, they're a team that's older. Um, they got very little cap space. They got no um, cap space. Yeah, so, I mean, here, I would have just clean house and, you know, tried to figure out how I can move Carson and, you know, move forward with Jalen Hurts and maybe get an offense that can be kind of centered around him about what he does strong because, I mean, they teeter totter and with being bad for a long time right now. Yeah, so are you convinced Jalen Hurts can be better than Carson Wentz? I don't even think it's about being better. I think it's about what's better for the franchise and what's better for the team at this point. I think Carson Wentz is a better quarterback than Jalen Hurts right now today. But if we're looking at the team going forward and trying to be a good football team, we need to figure out how we make some of these draft picks that we invested in fit our team and make our team go so we can be better in the long run. No mercy. 
The Saints are preparing to host the Bucks this Sunday on Fox, and after dropping their first two games of the season against their division rival, Tampa Bay feels pretty good about their chances. Yesterday, Bruce Arians denied that his team lacks a psychological edge because of the two losses, saying, I don't think there's any more swag than our offense has. I guarantee that. You can't get caught up in the finger-pointing and the trash-talking got to play football. So Shannon, how big of a psychological edge do the Saints have after winning the first two matchups, including the blowout week nine? I don't think it's a, a, that big of an edge skill, but I don't think they're in awe of the, of the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the swag they potentially come into this game with. They feel that if we play our best, they play their best, we're better than them. That's how the Saints feel about this skill because I agree. We, we, we've beaten them twice. We match up very well mm -hmm. because of our physicality. Yep. Uh, Latimer loves the challenge of going up against Mike Evans, skipping two games this year, one catch, two yards, uh, and he had zero catches last year. So Lattimore loves that challenge. There's no love loss between these two guys. Nope. I'm, assume, I'm assuming um, they will probably put Jack, Ra <clears throat> Jack Rabbit, Janoris Jenkins. Mm -hmm. He might play A.B. in the slot. I'm not sure. He might. Uh, that's probably the matchup that I'm probably thinking they're going to go with. Listen, Chris Godwin is really good. We do, but of the threats, we feel Evans, A.B., can do more damage than Godwin. And then our third corner, we, we, we like that matchup. Mm. Uh, they like that matchup. I'm saying we. They like that matchup. Skip, well, by, by Sunday, you're going to be a we. Yeah, it might you be. need this one. But Skip, I'm doing good right now. You know yep. what I mean. The Lakers won the title. Bama. I mean, you trying to give me sweepstakes? Mm. I don't, you know, I, I don't want to be greedy or anything. I don't know how you, <laughs> you take Bama. I mean, how do you... How do you some like co-op Bama. I don't know where that came from. You're not from Alabama. How close? You didn't go to Alabama. How close to Alabama? Georgia close to Alabama, okay, right? Yeah, I thought you did. <laughs> yeah. The okay. biggest key for both teams, Skip, is going to be what? Pressure. Which team, which team can keep their quarterback clean? The Saints really need to keep Drew clean because you don't really want to go to your backup because mm -hmm. I believe if something were to happen to Drew in this game, they're going to Jameis, not Taysom Hill. You could be right. Um, but what we've seen from the Saints when they play Tampa, they've been able to get pressure on Brady with four. Mm -hmm. Get pressure with four and not compromise your back end. That's going to be key again. Now, <clears throat> I give you Bruce Arians is absolutely right. Their offense is playing with a lot of swag. They play really, really well. But I don't believe over the last five weeks they faced a defense as comparable as the New Orleans Saints. So we'll see if that swag is well placed. Mm -hmm. You know, the Pittsburgh Steelers had a lot of swag, did a lot of talking. At the end of the day, Skip, you got to play this game. Yep. Ain't nobody about no swag and about how, what mm -hmm. you did the last five games and we started this, we started that. Sunday is one for one. Mm. And you're going to play, six, you got 60 minutes, maybe have to go 70 minutes. Okay. But. All right. Of the this entire NFL regular season, mm -hmm. what was the most shocking outcome of all to me? It was on a Sunday night at oh, Tampa 30, Bay. 33. I, I just didn't see that coming. Right. New Orleans went into Tampa Bay. They had just acquired Antonio Brown. They tried to force him into the rotation right away. They were 6-2, and two, and people were talking about maybe the best team in football is Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. Defense plus offense. And what happened? Well, nothing happened to Tampa <laughs> Bay because they, they got – they got bum rushed. They they got annihilated, yeah. humiliated on national television. They did. They were hapless. They were hopeless. That they had no chance on offense. While Drew Brees just went up and down the field. He did. And, and went touchdown, stopped it, fumbled the two. They were going in for a touchdown. Right. Touchdown, 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 field goal. What? It, it, it's a mismatch. Mm -hmm. It's it's all time. Not competitive. You, you were not competitive in that game. They had to call a timeout with 523 left to kick a field goal to get to three. <laughs> so what if, if you're on the Saints right now, what are you thinking? You feel you feeling really good, Skip. We we here's the thing. We know we can play with this team. We're not in awe of the offense. Because, Skip, they do trot out a, a, an all-star football team. They got Tom Brady. You argue, make the case he's the uh, one or second-best quarterback of all time. You got three guys that's going to the Pro Bowl. Yep. Uh, All-pro, an mm -hmm. all-world, all-century tight end. Cameron Bray, up-and-coming tight end. A very solid offensive line. So, you know, they feel good getting off the bus, knowing that they can put points on the board. But the Saints says we can match them. We can match their physicality. Mm -hmm. We can match up with them on the edges, and we can shut down their run with mm -hmm. our front seven. So I'm not a big fan of Bruce Arians speaking because he just talks and talks and talks to hear himself talk because it's all about his own ego. 
But I did love what he said in this interview yesterday, this media session, mm -hmm. because he made a lot of piercing points to me. But the best one was the one Jenny read. I don't think there's any more swag than our offense has right now. I guarantee that, meaning the New Orleans defense, as much swagger as it plays with, and it will talk and it will finger point and it will <laughs> it got Chicago completely out of its game twice. Right? Skip, I want to know what 22 is saying and you receive to make him swing on I, it. I don't know, but he didn't swing. He didn't swing. <laughs> he he made him swing, and it happened twice. Yes! Okay, well, that's what they, that's how they play, but they can back it up. They, they, they can put their actions where their mouths are. He's leading somebody girl to DM. He ain't somebody girl DM. Okay, there's something going on there where he pushed the hottest button he could push. <laughs> Skip, okay. he just minded his own business, Skip. Okay, well, don't, don't <laughs> underestimate. They will try to do that this team. And if they get Tampa on the run, they are going to bury Tampa because they don't like Tampa. Yeah. What's concerning to me is that he said there's no more swag than our offense. Mm -hmm. He didn't say anything about his defense. You know his defense got to play too, right? No, he has to and play. you do know, like the Saints. Okay, well, what did I tell you yesterday? <laughs> the only hope for Tampa Bay is to go in there and outscore Drew Brees. But you can't outscore him by going in the 40s because you're not going to score 40 against this defense. Right. Could you get into the 30s? Maybe if you were hitting on every cylinder. And what is the biggest X factor from that Sunday night game to this one? It's Antonio Brown. Right. He was not ready to play on that Sunday night. He had no business being in the rotation. He was in the starting right. lineup on that Sunday night. He just joined the team. Well, I, I thought, that Skip, if you think about it, for the most part, that night they tried to force feed him the ball. That was the only time that I really thought Tom was trying to force him the ball. He was. If you look at Sunday, I mean, uh, Saturday, Skip, he only caught two passes. Yeah. Now, they were huge catches. Mm -hmm. He had a nice run, but they didn't force him the ball. And I don't believe Tom will force him the ball. He'll let coverage dictate. And if, my, if Lattimore done, doing a great job on, 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 on uh, Evans, why force the ball? Why try to prove a point? Oh, we can keep, we can complete passes on you. Why? Okay. If, I still believe that if they're going to pull off scoring 30-something points and winning this game by outscoring Drew Brees, Antonio Brown's going to have to be the difference maker. He's going to have to make two or three plays, right. catch and run kind of plays, that will be the difference in this game. Chris Godwin was disappointing to me at Washington because he dropped three balls, including he a had, touchdown he had, pass. He had, he, had, he, had, he had some yips. He had some yips. But remember, that was his first ever playoff game. Tom Brady's played in 42 playoff right, games. Right. Chris Godwin was in his first. Mike Evans was in his right. first. Uh, majority of this whole roster was in its first right. playoff game. So at least they got that out of the way right. and under their belt. But this is going to be a whole nother level of football. And, but the Chris Godwin, Skip, it's still, I mean, you used to having, you'd be able to do your hands like this. And he has to have his two fingers I taped know. together. So, got it. <laughs> but, but that hadn't bothered him until now. Well, well a lot of times, Skip, you know, he, he's a body catcher. He's not. Yeah. He doesn't just reach up and just no. pluck the ball. No, I agree. Uh, and so, but I, I, I don't think that'll 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 be a, a problem this week. Can the can the uh, the Tampa offensive line can they protect him? Yep. And can Brady avoid? And, because and who if, did he single out when he was talking about single matchups? You know, one on ones. He's, he's got a rookie tackle at right tackle, yep. yeah, and he's going to go up against Cam Jordan. But he's faced him twice now, so he I think he he's knows doing a pretty good the. Job. He's got the lay of the land, you know? The matchup, Skip, is Hendrickson against Donovan if, Smith. If Hendrickson, if, if can, Hendrickson play. can play. Yep. That's the matchup. Oh, I know. Because that was the guy. You saw the number he did he on him last time. Terrorized him. He did, you saw what he did to Eric Fisher. I, when he was in New Orleans. Oh. And so. And, and he, then in the end, who's their money receiver? Who is the one that Tom goes to when in doubt? It's that big six foot five inch guy, yeah. Mike Evans. Mm -hmm. He has no history against Marshawn Lattimore. Marshawn literally just owns him. Right. He just takes him and shuts him down right. and out, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Okay, so Mike Evans is going to have to rise and shine yes. and separate enough to make a couple of early plays to get him rolling, Yep. right? I agree. And then in the end, as, as Bruce summed up, it's going to be a, he said it twice, physical, physical battle. That's what it is. Yep. You've been in these. How about that game you guys played at Tennessee? Right? Mm -hmm. Was that that's the most physical football game I have ever witnessed, and I was in the press box looking down on it. Well, you know the thing. The thing was, Skip. That was our. The that Ravens. was our third time. That was our third time because we were division that is opponents. Right. That was okay. our third time playing them. Third time. They beat us at our place. We went down there, beat them. So this was for obviously added significance. But I think so. The there thing, are no more secrets. No, you just no, no, have no. to. We we know them. Yeah. They know what we're gonna do. We yeah. know what you're gonna do. It's gonna be Eddie George and Steve McNair, and you got to stop them. But I right? do. But you do take solace in knowing, Skip. Mm -hmm. We beat this team before we could beat them again. Okay.
Well, I think they're taking lots of salt. <laughs> lots of sweat. No mercy. Mac Jones showed why he was a Heisman finalist last night, throwing for 464 yards and five touchdown passes in Bama's blowout win over Ohio State. Meanwhile, Justin Fields struggled to get into much of a rhythm, completing just over 50% of his passes for 194 yards and one touchdown. Fields downplayed his injury, saying after the game that he was, quote, healthy enough to be out there. So, Shannon, who will be the better NFL QB, Jones or Fields? Skip, I really like the way uh, Mac Jones throws the football. Um, everything is on time. Everything is in rhythm. Everything gives the guy an opportunity to not only run with it, but protect himself from the big shot. Uh, he, he doesn't have the mobility. And that's, you know, maybe that's some of the things because we look at the quarterbacks now, uh, with the exception of Brady and Breeze, all the other quarter, top quarterbacks, Skip, can move. All of them. He'll run if you dare him. Right, right, but, right. But it's not. I mean, you really got to be, you. right, yeah. right. You really got to do. It's yeah. got to be like the highway, the, 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 the mm-hmm. first part of the lockdown where everything is wide open yep. and he'll take off. Um, Phil's year has been up and down, and I don't know if he answered any of the questions. He silenced a lot of his critics with the Clemson game, and they wanted to see if he can follow it up. And even if he didn't follow it up with another six touchdown, almost 400-yard performance, I think they wanted to see him play a little better than what he played last night, Skip. Now, I don't know. Obviously, he says he was out there, so he was <clears> – <throat> I guess he was. He says he was healthy enough to be out there. Yep. But he, did, he didn't look as comfortable as he did against uh, 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 Clemson. And like you said, the, the performance that he's had up uh, this entire year, he's been up and down. No matter what you think about Mac Jones, he's he's been here. Oh, there's been well, no, how about he's been here? No, but I'm saying, Skip, he's uh-huh. been there. Ain't been no peaks and no. valleys. Mm-hmm. One good game, bad game, but nope. everything has been excellent. Greatest QBR in the history of college football. Highest completion percentage yep. in one year of football. Mm-hmm. So with that, Skip, what is it, 77? 70, 77. Skip, but it's not like he's just throwing bubble screens. Like, yeah, he throws a lot of those to get the ball into uh, uh, Devontae's and Waddle before he got hurt and Najee. But he pushes the ball down the field a lot more than I remember Colt McCoy throwing the ball I down the field. I agree with that. So with that being said, I would take Mac Jones. Um, but his, his, his lack of mobility is somewhat concerning. But the inconsistency that I've seen from Justin Field is a little bit more concerning than his lack of mobility. All right. I resisted saying this game after game after game. I said, Mac Jones is nothing but a product of all that talent on offense, that pipeline of an NFL offensive line that he gets to play behind. And yet I sat back at the end of the game last night and I looked at these numbers and I said, that's just extraordinary. And then I looked at Justin Fields numbers and I told you, I watched him carefully against Indiana he had a long, hard game. Watched him against Northwestern. He struggled. Yeah. Remember, that's when Trey Sermon went off for 331. Yeah. Saved him. And then Clemson just took my breath away. I didn't see that coming. Six touchdown passes. What was he, 385 yards? Yep. yep. And then last night, hit and miss. Hit and miss. Barely over 50% completions. 194 yards. Right. Nah. But he made a couple throws where I said, oh, that's big time. And yet, in the end, I got to concede what you just conceded. (laughs) I guess Mac Jones is the real deal. Yeah. And to me, I sat back and I said, is he Andy Dalton? Could he be Andy Dalton? Listen, Andy Dalton, when he went to Cincinnati, pretty good. Yeah. They averaged winning 10 games a year for his first five years, Mm -hmm. and he made three Pro Bowls. Yeah. Could he be Andy Dalton? Yeah, maybe. And he's not the most athletic, mobile guy. Does he have a huge arm? He's got an above-average arm. So does this kid, yes. right? And I like this kid's swagger. He's got some Joe Burrow in him. He's yeah. just not as athletic right. and mobile as, as Joe, Joe Burrow correct. is, right? Yeah. So I like the swagger from both kids. But, again, would I lean – do I think Joe Burrow is going to be long-term better than Mac Jones? Yeah. I still do. Right. You know, you know he got the – you know injury. what kicked out of him this year in yeah. Cincinnati. And he had coming out that gruesome knee injury. Just gruesome, yeah. But the point is, in the end – Every time I want to love Justin Fields, he he won't let me love him because then he'll misfire. Yeah. He'll be off target, and you'll say, "What what are you doing? What are you thinking? Did you see one bad? Th- it's like we said about Joe Burrow. Did you see a bad throw all year? I couldn't remember a bad throw. Yeah. Did did Mac Jones make one bad throw all year? Skip, did you did you say, "Oh, that was horrible"? Skip, remember, we watched the national championship game last year, and we watched and we talked about how Joe Burrow looked against Clemson's defense. Um, I think he was thirty-one of forty-nine. 
Yep. If you look at this kid's numbers, and he had three drops, so for the most part, he was he was perfect. I mean, I, I and I'm like, he they got to have an off game at some point in time, Skip. He can't keep playing like this the whole season where he's, you know, 22 or 26. He's 26 or 34. He what if he has a back? He didn't have a bad game all year. Not he did one. Not. He also had the greatest receiver in the history of college <laughs> yeah. football, and he had the best running back this year in yes. college football yes. as far as productivity yes. went. Yes. Not saying he's the best in a vacuum, but man, it's hard to argue. And then at, I even saw Todd McShay after Justin Fields had the, the tough regular season games. He dropped, he had him number two on his draft board and dropped him down to 11. And I think he's going to be somewhere in the middle of the first round now. Right. And I think Mac Jones is going to compete with him to be the yeah. next quarterback. I, I think so take. too. I, I think the thing is, is that Skip, you look at his accuracy. Yep. And that's the number one thing for a quarterback is accuracy. Yep. He, he throws the ball with tremendous anticipation. And he throws a nice ball too, Skip. Right. I, you know, wobble to his pass. And in the end, this I know about football. I don't care how many weapons you have, you, you have to make the throws yeah. on time. Yes, okay. and he, 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 he made did. every throw. Every one of them. And another reason you can always like the guy, Skip Jones, big Tebow fan, big yep. Tebow fan. No mercy. Ahead of Sunday's game on Fox, Tom Brady replied to a tweet suggesting his game should be on the History Channel with a Photoshop of himself and Drew Brees and some great old age effects. We've got the big gray beard, wrinkles, glasses for a balding Drew. That really is my favorite part, the glasses. Shannon, what does it tell you that Brady posted this History Channel parody? You understand the rarity of this, Skip. It's mm -hmm. not very often that players like this of this level <clears throat> play each other, especially in their 40s. It didn't happen. Now we've seen, Skip, Brady and Manning faced each other a number of times. But in the 40s, they mm -hmm. played each other in the 20s, <clears throat> excuse me, in the early 30s. Peyton was at the tail end of his career when they faced the last time in 2015. But Skip, to get guys 42 and 43 years of old, mm -hmm. facing for an opportunity to continue to play in the postseason, yeah. we don't see this often. Well, I'm Never sorry. Never see it again. I do not love this from Tom Brady. Yeah. I did not want to see mellow, humble, laugh at himself, <laughs> Tom Brady, the nice guy dad next I like door. It. Not the on this yeah, week. Da, 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 he da. is facing the greatest challenge of his career at New Orleans. I needed zero dark 30. I needed psycho Tom. That is I don't need good guy Tom yeah. laughing at how he, old he, he is. He's like, huh? man, you know, hey, uh, you got a great beard. Yeah. Let's look back on this. No, no, no. <laughs> I need angry Skip, you know Brady. this is a rarity, Skip. I don't care. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Nobody will care about that on Sunday. They care about who wins. Give Tom, me psycho talk. That might be the first tweet that I actually like of his. I, oh, I think good. we need to remember this moment. Yeah. I personally thought it was so, so funny. Now you get nervous. You may talk and follow you worried now. Yep. The herd is on uh, right now after us. Congrats again to Alabama. We'll see you tomorrow. I'm in